Tapson in those previous pregame interviews against players said the same thing. We're just going to play our own game because that didn't work out well. Maybe you should adjust your game when you play them if you maybe want to win. Yeah. But he did say they're going to have a surprise in the map with those trays. Kasad, what's it going to be? Nuke. No, that's kidding. It's going to be Inferno, maybe. It's definitely not going to be Nuke, and it's definitely not going to be Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> so you pretty much nailed that right out of the gate. 100%. Wrong rate there for Kassad. First map, though. <laughs> One of those that. days. Why do I feel like we're going to get a Dust 2 out of here somehow? Some way, even though the odds well, the, stack They go for it. Dust 2. It's, it's, uh, there's the, the big is not going to pick Dust 2. He just said in the interview they, they have something else in store. Okay, well, let's find out. What is that first map I mean, on our Vito? Oh, Vertigo. Well, all right. Pack it up. Well, the, that is a surprise, Trace. I mean, that was the best map for this player's team last mm -hmm. year by far. I mean, they had 90% win rate on it for the majority of the year, right? It was just ridiculously good. So I think they're going for the like complete curveball where they don't expect players to prepare for this oh. unless they were about to pick it themselves. <laughs> you know, then they're like, oh, we just got a free pick. Well, a, it's an ancient pick from from players. That's that's what they did against them in, in, in that Budapest event as well. So it went really easy for them. Now they're going to start you know, on T side again. I wonder if they're gonna, you oh know. Oh boy, here it comes. Overpasses out. Well, the thing is, like, players also, oh. on the, yeah, they veto yeah. Dust2 out of respect, I guess, in the end, and also because they had such a great performance on Mirage. But I mean, they beat them three times on Dust2. Do they really need to leave it out? At the end, they probably didn't have to, but you know, either way, they have a good map. And I like the fact that they picked Ancient because of the loss against Movistar, right? Like, things didn't go well for them but you know they're still a good ancient team and they still it shows you that they have confidence in their map in their preparation right that one loss isn't going to to deter them from playing ancient what again. i'm afraid of is like big understanding and expecting 100 percent that ancient is going to be the pick from players and preparing for it we know that big likes to you know anti-strat and prepare for their opponents and there was a lot of gaps on that map so, yesterday against Movistar Riders, so maybe they can capitalize on that one. So our commentator is going to be very, very happy with this veto, obviously because the Nori maps are out the window right out the way. Okay, we're looking at the Vertigo, Mirage. Ancient, Mirage. Let me go ahead and ask you, Kassad, who's walking away with the series? And you better sell it good. The but. thing is, like, I want to, I, I really want to say players, and I, I, I think just because yesterday they didn't look good, but they, they have a way of bouncing back after okay. like a bad day and like realizing what went wrong, and they just kind, they just come back and like, you know, they're a little bit angrier than than they were yesterday and hungrier to to, to win this one. And obviously, the history says always, you know, that players were a strong team. Players, Trace. They've players. been owning them. They're gonna keep owning them. Exactly. Players gonna play. They're the biggest shareholder of big team. <laughs> okay, yeah, not bad. We'll take it. And we'll also take it into the game, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm this. That's right. That's Yanko and Kassad. We're going to be jumping into the matchup, which is Vertigo Ancient Mirage between Big and the players. It's going to be brought to you by Sponge and Machine. But I'm this. Thank you, fellows. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, I'm interested about this one. Big clan on one side of things. You know, they are rising to the occasion. Players did already demonstrate that there is a bit of a gap in their armor and look that could be exploited by Big Clan. I love the fragging freedom Tabson's gotten over the course of this new player's arrival. We get this, we get into a position where he can frag a bit harder and focus on that crosshair a bit more. But Krimbo's the one to do so here. You can hear Faven tracking them. Julie's for this here as well. So 30 bullets of doom here. Crimbo set up to receive, and he's got a really the perfect weapon for the job. They're gonna come and test him. Holds his nerve, holds his aim, jiggles. Not yet in sync. Two confirmed short. Uh, it's weird to swing him now, right? No, knowing he has the Julie's, he can just keep spamming. So they have to be careful about this. He's actually granted them a, a lot of space by dropping back. You also have Tizian on another pair of Julie's, but he's locking down middle here. Note the smoke and the flash for Faven, depending on where that comes out. Well, there's the flash forward. A execute starting to come together now, but still taking their time. Yeah, but now across. Bomb not yet there yet. Inters to get a through. Crimbo still being kept a lid on. Finally deals with Hobbit. Getting frustrated now as he's still got 14 bullets in the mag. And Tizian's duelies have struck as well. Taps in a double. Axile alone and no bullets. Wow, big clan just winning the war of attrition there. Yeah, beautiful stuff. And staying in limbo with those Julies, right? That, that's key because it means a lot more of the attention from the rotators coming in from big can just focus towards top crane. Uh, I think something we need to point out here is the fact that this is the map choice of big and they have been granted the CT side start. Uh, players have opted to take this to the offensive here. Maybe that has something to do with how it ended yesterday on Ancient. You had three players who were absolutely missing. They're on the side of a milk cart, Naphne, Axel, uh, and of course, Inters were just nowhere to be seen during that matchup. 
up and the riders get across the line. And this, we need to point out the ramifications of another player's loss or a big win because there's only four teams truly in contention for this group after what we've seen from Godson and the party astronauts. Uh, Liquid have been looking hot to trot. Movistar riders showing they're no slouch and then it's down to players and big here as well. So when we shake everything out on Sunday, matches like this are going to be worth their weight in gold. So it is important for players here to convert a game like this. I'm sure that's been spelled out for them. Uh, over the course of like the evening, Axel and Inters just went. I'm tired. Like I don't. Not, no spoilers here or invasion of privacy. But they just were displeased at dinner. Is all I'll say. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine that third map just not getting anything done. Yeah. Right? Like and three players. Normally it's you know one guy. Yeah. You know he's not getting any shots. Three players just couldn't get anything going. And on this force by they've already taken some chip damage. Tabson in no man's land does take down Hobbit. I do like it when a CT opts to go early sandbags because it's only going to add more fuel to the you need to molly this every round. Here they come. Pop Flash is going to be in sync, is it? A bit ahead of the pack, though. Good find from Axile. He's opened up the site, goes for the wide swing. We'll draw crosshairs and draw blood. Nearly a double. Sears and Scout does live on thanks to the Extinguish Retreat. Available for, or rather, three versus three. Now, the bomb approaching. Elevator smoked and a safe, uncontestable plant. And they should flash and go here. They've taken too long, so that is a three on three. Now the bomber getting planted. Oh, Blinds up flash. two with one. Yeah, that's perfect. Shira didn't get a chance to play. And they're up over. Oh, not bad. Great catch. Naphany strikes. Panicking now. They think they're defusing. Yeah, they are nervous. And walking in on it. They've got so much time for this. They can probably exploit a miss shot from Sears. It's favorite's done the damage. And they're around. Big Clan weather another storm on eight. And I, I know I'm using that analogy twice in back to back rounds, but that's kind of what players are trying to create here. It smokes, it's slow, it's constant, it's. It's a lot of pressure, but it is, at this time, dealt with. Yeah, and here's the thing. With like the second round of the game for both teams, you don't have all the utility you're going to see once we get to the full gun rounds, right? It's not all the ramps, smokes, and mollies coming in, the HEs to dissuade. It's a little bit more through bullets here. So well handled by Big there. I, I thought once they got into that three-on-three, three, it could have been all over Red Rover. But the flash forward to initiate with the Tizzy and Frag, that was huge. And a buyback from players again. I think they realize they can just win one early. Can start to amount a couple of rounds here against the German side. Well, watch out though, sirson has got his AWP out. I'm a big fan of the Searson flick. You remember a Searson flick. Not going to be getting anything, anything early. Instead, dispatch towards short. I wonder how pushy he gets. Nafani's walking on up. In fact, we name a smoke after this man from his progressions up this ramp. Yeah, Tabson needs to be aware that this is a possibility, right? You can see how far he is up already. Minute 28, and he's kind of under the crosshair of Tabson right now. Okay, well, this definitely signals that they are in quite an offensive position on the ramp. And while not thrusting themselves forward big, they're just limping out utility, happy to chip away, try and stall them out. Don't give them a free kill. Force them to actually take the fight before you have any action. And we haven't really tuned in to B-Watch yet, uh, but that was just a little update for you that Faven's going to be responsible for that. And you could Axile and Hobbit posturing to, uh, to keep him on his toes. That smoke here. This one should be bouncing off the back wall and landing on the stairs. And, and well timed as well. We got about 45 second mark on the clock. They're going to try and boost up. And this just allows Faven to continue to play passive. It, it seems like it's a ruse towards B. Like I can see the bomb on Nafany floating back towards A here. You've got Tizian up close mid. Faven will probably have to be that fourth man rotating over to help. Utility left over. There's a molly, a smoke, a couple of flashes for the CTs to defend with. But. This is very, very slow stuff from players here. 20 seconds now. That's, they're going to have to commit A. So Searson to be run down and Tabson to receive on site. Oh, they walk in. Is the round over already? Yeah, it is. I think so. 10 seconds, 9 seconds. Searson's happy to collect. They can't get in the bomb. They're going to lose everyone. Oh. The time probably. He's going to try and survive hide in plain sight, just using the smoke to just dash through and does Israel. go down after time. Okay. The, I, a player's having like an identity crisis right now, and the, I'm not trying to make a, a joke there by any means. I just mean like in their approach to the game. It's been three rounds. They've attempted to go away. They forced sport in two consecutive rounds. The first force by was at least a little bit close, but this is so uninspired. Nobody took any action. Did we even see them take a single fight across the map before they were executing at 20 seconds? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, shake of the head, because what the bloody hell is going on early? This is just uh, all sorts here. I, I think a timeout has been called, and it has indeed. 
just to maybe say, boys, look, we we, we got to win the games. We've seen what happens in the other groups. What, what do you think? Yeah, well, like, I, I mean, let's not point fingers in no directions, but like it, what? Well, where is the uh, the pointy part of their spear gone? I don't know. They, they, it seems very dull. It doesn't seem threatening at all. Like, Nafani would normally, you know, be running up and getting some fights. Players would want to fight him around tell, the smokes, yeah. and, and nobody wants to give him a fight right there. They're just happy to allow Sirison to posture with that AWP. Still very early days. Run only three rounds, but uh, already I mean, I don't a, know. a couple of things to notch on the board to, to worry about. When was the last time you saw Shiro absolutely losing his... Uh, three rounds into a game? Definitely yeah, not, never, right? Never. Now some oh, aggression. Yeah. Well, Searson could completely expel this. Now this is a bit of a risk to be doing against Tech Knights and Armor. You can just run down, your orb falls into enemy hands, and Shiro pops off. So I'm gonna resmoke this. Yeah, okay, the reload oh. coming. Oh no, this could go so wrong. Just like that, the orb is on the floor. Tabson's giving him an M4, and Krimbo is gonna have to save him. Now they don't have Kevlar, but they do have that Shiro orb as we discussed. Searson going a bit over aggressive, feeling himself after the 3-0. And run down. Good finds on the Tech Nines. Pressure now, and there you go. Starting to give away a couple of kills here. Tizian's dead. Just one more on the side to find, and he steps into the same line. Too easy. Okay, well, that's a gift from the gods right there. I think that's going to, you know, get you back in the game in a big way. Uh, I'm chuckling just because the amount of times, you, you know, I thought it was just a... A, a, a matchmaking exclusive when you miss, you, you kind of, you haven't been keeping it track too much of what your opponent's going to be buying, and you end up going for the first aggressive maneuver against the Tech Nines. That always just feels like a bit of a whoopsie. But perhaps, I mean, I imagine it was calculated. It's not like Big Clan are going to have let their their finger off of the pulse of what's coming their way. It's one of the things as well that like when you're spamming smokes and you're reloading behind them, it's so dangerous, right? Yeah. That's why you always want to keep a couple residual. You never want to be going for the reload in the open like that because that is what caused the push. As soon as you hear the reload, you're like, oh, okay, we've got, we've got window of opportunity <laughs> now. Actually, push on through. Seriously, if he misses, well, you see what happens. We can't. It's not a Gatling gun, you know. He takes a shot. He's going to have to bolt. And 3-1 now, and that one, oh. yeah, that might might sting a little bit. That's, yeah. the, that's the remedy. That is the bloody, oh, oh, horrible death. But that is the remedy for success, right? I mean, for the last round, Inter's died after time with 300 bucks in his pocket. What does he leave with? An M4. You know, that is just immediate resuscitation. We get to keep players uh, head above water now, and it's going to be Big Land that have to kind of stomach an awkward buy. Yeah, the, the ramifications of that round loss are huge. This should have likely been a 4-0, you know, stretching your legs, you're having a good time, you're in premium economy, you've been upgraded, the boss likes you, and, and now you're going, oh, hold up a second, I'm back in cattle class, and we're having to do a three-man boost to find something cheeky early. Oh, and they will, that is cheeky. See you later, Naphany, Crimbo. Pivoting on the head there to grab the opener, and well, if they can bounce another one back here, big that will fire up the squadron. I'm sure NK will be getting loud. Yeah. Now they're ahead of this smoke, right? So that's meant to operate as a bit of a one-way there that lands on out. The CTs can come play behind it and peer down ramp, but it also is just slowing them scaling up further now with those jiggles that we saw on their. I guess their first force buy. This never works. No, I've never seen it pay off. And Crimbo being very audacious to pull it out against players. These boys are very well ironed vertigo flight pathers. If they just swing ramp, it's fine. But if they come up short, you're in so much strife. It's very rare. You know, they're unable to come up through that avenue. But as I just mentioned, they did go for a four-man jiggle up ramp before. So here they come. They're not accounting for this. At the moment, no. When does he choose to strike? Oh, now would be good. That flash was great. That's a great catch. Kirimbo waiting, baiting, completely baiting. And cleared. Good find from Inters. Sends him down 51 floors. Good denial, though. The bomb play on. Cancelled as Shiro knows where the last remains, and it's only Searson on the scout, so this should be a formality. All right. Good recovery. Triple kill out of Shiro. So he's had a double into a triple with the AWP from Searson, and that has put his team on the board and really uh, just quickly dismissed Big Clan's chances of a dominant defensive start. Yeah, really curious there from Krimbo. Once that flash came in and his teammate was already fighting, I, I guess he was attempting to be the safety net. All right, you know, I'll make sure I get the double kill once they enter the site. But he's just classically overcooked the pooch here. And uh, his booty going to be sticking out. Inter just rips that one off. And uh, way too easy. You're right. Shiro wants that orbs in his hand, the impact being felt. And now we have the human centipede. <sighs> Except I don't think they're going to be having uh, too much fun, as they didn't in the movie. I no. Think. Yeah. There's that and, and teeth. Those movies, if, you, if you're if you into some, some strange stuff, guys, I don't recommend it for your kids. 
Heath. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, I, that was popular at school. What a great start for Big that has just gone horribly wrong by their so own quick, errors. So quick. I mean, I was. I don't know if it's just them either. Like, this has just been like five rounds of Counter Strike where we've been tracking, like, with the tally chart, the unforced errors. <laughs> How's he got two? <laughs> They've done well here to get two kills of their own of Big. Now, if they can grab that AK, yes. Good saves. Get yes. on out, boys. We like the orb. We like the AK there. Pretty good uh, Chochis to take home. Yeah, and Tizian's probably. <laughs> Or rather, I suppose Searson's happy that Tizian's got his ult back. That was the last round that Shiro gets to kill him with his own AWP. Say Chochki. Chochki. Seems sounds fun to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what a Chochki is. It's like a knickknack. Oh, cool. Chochki. I learned it from an American when I was doing I was working at a, a metal festival doing merchandise and he was like the rep for the festival. And uh, we were talking about, you know, like, you know, like chains or maybe pins or like a bottle opener or whatever. And he labeled them as chachis. I thought that was quite... Ah, it's borrowed from Yiddish and is ultimately Slavic in origin. Oh, okay. It's a small bric-a-brac. A bric-a-brac. Bric That's an alternative that we use in England. I'm guessing we stole that from the French. All right, well, hey, we're learning today. <laughs> yeah, bric-a-brac, yeah, it is. Where do you keep your tchotchkes? Do you keep Victorian it in, era. in a little jar? Maybe you put your tchotchkes in a little box. Maybe they're just on your desk. Where are your tchotchkes? Decorative teacup, for example. Mm. That's the example we were given. Never been big on collecting the china. Nor have I. Here we go. It is gunnies. And Naphne getting a little bit funny. Double stack in mid right there, actually. Okay. Yeah, and it pays off. Like, Sirson's tried it a couple of times, this time with friends. Better with friends. It's always better with friends. And he's managed to get himself a nice opening kill with the AWP that's still in play ever since that second round. Shiro has purchased his second, brought a second into the fray. And Tabson responsible for short. There will be a deep Molotov. He'll exchange with the smoke. And smoke lasts a little longer, so short control maintained in the exchange. Time. Now, I don't think they're ever going to fall victim to the clock in the same way they did in their awkward starting. Axel's still parked over towards B here, and Faven's giving him nothing. Right? I've just been looking at this on the radar as both of them just been chilling. Haven't been doing a whole lot, but at least they know there's no B info or aggression. And now with Nafani's forward position here, they can start to softly execute and see what they can bait out. There's still enough time for a two-pronged attack. I'm sure no one's looking. Why is no one looking? How has he struck such a chord, such a gap? Oh, good damage from Tabson. He reacts with a double of his own, and that's a good pickup as well. Searson ready for the short swing. I guess they Round's just over. left it open. Round does conclude. Uh, did you see that right there as well? The way that uh, players went to execute onto the site was they threw that uh, running smoke off of the beam, and that one goes further into elevated room. It's something that I, I wish teams would do more on Vertigo, right? It's something that uh, I know Kassad had his 100 Thieves boys doing. As opposed to kind of the left and right side yeah, of site so box. susceptible to spam and yeah. nades, right? Whereas if you get that deep elevator smoke in, you already have some present short. You've mollied it, you've spammed it, you make sure nobody's close in that corridor. You molly headshot maybe you get a smoke heaven or you get a molly heaven as well or sniper nest whatever you want to call it you can take a lot more space and it's less suffocating you're not sitting there worried about getting spammed through you're not having it so it's just a way that I, it, 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 well i think you know it would be better for uh, teams to see them using that time and time again but a cheeky way there to to facilitate serious and we were talking about this yesterday in the party astronauts game i don't think we, we saw as much of it as what was necessary but in this game it'll be key Setting up your AWPers to find openings. When you have an AWPer that can hit shots, right? I know that sounds silly. Everyone's AWPer should be able to hit shots, but the mandatory kill like that, it's great. Now, this is about to get spicy. Bro, Tizian is hard committed to this. His responsibility is middle, and he's just going to assume he can exploit the expectation. Knocks off the head. Shiro catches him on the retreat, but mission accomplished. It's two for one trade. That feels huge already. Yeah, mission, I don't want to say accomplished. This is totally recoverable, but... Tizian, he backs his himself, he backs his aim, and he gets a double. Another push here. So they've already got forklift room as well. Tabson should be good in another weird position. They're not going to expect this. That has been three of the kills on an angle, oh. make it four, that they're not even ready for. Oh, man, oh, man, big. I truly believe the conversation was, let's get under these boys' skin. If they're giving you all that space, you know, what did we say when we were talking about players yesterday with Mobby Star Riders is that they give you so much respect you can kind of start laying down the disrespect. Yeah. Well, playing your own game and then some, right? Yeah. That from Tizian right there. If you get one and done, that's great, right? That's great. But you, oh, 
They're gonna like maybe the lineup here for Shiro. One and trade. Great stuff from Crimbo. They keep Ooh. three alive and starting to heat up right now. And you consider this, I feel like Big should have already had six. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like they should have been up to a massive lead. But if this continues to trend in this direction, you can see why they picked the map here. It's gonna be the second timeout called from Groove. Yeah, just angles you're not ready for. That that third kill came in at a minute 15. So really just understanding what they're up against here. Great stuff from Big. Send to yourselves, find some degree of peace. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really, really uh, hard for players, I think. I'd imagine that the mental side of Counter-Strike is going to be tested more than it's ever been tested before. Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, it, it is an individual basis. You really do just have to kind of win the battle in your own head. To, to reset after what was a terrible day, and you could, if you start confirming in your head, oh, it's happening again, or this is this is permanent, this is bigger, this is I have to resolve this. You know, it, it you can just spiral. So I do hope that uh, we see players at least with the best foot forward. Now Hobbit has decided in taking some initiative. He wants to try and show the team just how effective they can be even on the light bikes. They've got enough util to facilitate a Hobbit entry, and he oh, oh is trying to oh walk the flames. He's burning down. That was nearly the hundred to zero. Couldn't track it. They don't have Kevlar or anyone else. So already, talking of mental, this one's going to be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? There are almost entire utility sets to deal with that little lurky play there with that smoke now, right? In the beginning, it was hard. People didn't know what to throw. Now you see what we had from NIP the other day where they'd throw the block smoke that would land down the bottom. You can double molly. You can even start spamming through from different angles as opposed to playing over the top of the scaff. Oh, that's a bit of a flub from Sirison. And here they come with the A-Ramp creep again. So tucking into a bit more of a retake setup on A right now, and they can afford to do this. There's no qualms here with this setup, knowing you have mollies, you have smokes, you have flashes for the retake, and you have the opening kill. Inters takes a port bullet to the side. Oh, wow, good contribution, but the bomb plant canceled. Axel's still a threat for a second. He's gone down, and yeah, just a couple of clocks with no armor. And Hobbit, the one who unfortunately burnt almost all of his health. 85 damage done by the flames, and it was Tabson's molly and Tabson's bullet that concludes the, the round. That's four frags from him in that round, keeping a track on the scores on the doors. He definitely looks like he's having um, a very good pro league, a very good pro league group statistically. Top of the scoreboard again, and he was uh, head and shoulders above the rest in their game um, just yesterday up against the astronauts. He's a very good player. He's, he's been a very good player for a Forever. long time. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I think when it was obviously with the Zantara situation or the, or the Gade situation, there's a bit more lag in communication. That's where uh, you've seen him affected a little bit more. But now it's the native tongue. It's the Deutsch. No problems there. And look, if Sirison can play at 80% of his level and Tabson can play at 80% of his level, you're, off, you're onto something here. You, you're onto a winner, actually. Uh, you just need the, the rest of your teammates to start contributing. And, and I don't think we've seen exactly what Faven is going to be able to offer at this highest level yet, like at least consistently, right? He hasn't been in the team for very long. I'm, I'm keen to learn a bit more about Crimbo. This is about to get spicy for Tabson. Oh, he's a dead man. Multiple is targets. He? he nearly takes two. Look at the, the nades. nades. Oh, their health is completely shaken. And big, they will not stir. That angle's been adopted by Tabson a couple of times now, so it's quite clear that he's found something that he knows he can be very jarring, and it stalls them out in an awkward position too. So we're trying to reroute up short here. Good luck. Definitely seems like bigger prioritized destabilizing the player's starts. Tizian's forward angle, Tabson willing to go one done. Fevin can flank from B here quite quickly as well. We don't need to keep Tabson it right now because we have the focus on the A side, but you can see that camera angle there showing that he can respond to things. There's a headshot molly. I think it's a little bit tizzy and should be fine. Oh, maybe not. Oh, oh perfect. Some effective Molotov. Big clan, do they go? Or do oh, they're they saving. Leave? Yeah, they're actually gonna give players the control. Okay. Uh, I suppose the unconfirmed damage that's done to the likes of Hobbit, the chip damage done to Shiro and Axel here, they're, they're not to be aware, but didn't feel like they gave the tail end of that round that the crack it probably deserved. So playing the long game here, we'll concede a fourth to players. Plenty of cash to splash, no dramas there. The loss bonus is the thing that would spur them on to a save like this, just knowing that uh, they're bottom of the barrel. 1,400 injected into their accounts. Once this bomb goes off, three, two, one.
That's the official sound Aww. effect. Lovely message to start off our day from uh, Just Plowden. He says he's waking up and getting stuff done and tuning in to the ESL Pro League. It's bringing him some joy. He loves Sponge and Machine. And uh, respect, man, because I do too. Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. Thanks. Just, I, just have, I, 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 I just had this image of this dude waking up, yep. popping us on his telly and folding his laundry, and we're like, good morning, mate. You know, I just felt, I, want, I, nice. I wanted it yeah. to be a good vibe for him, and, yeah. and now it is. So let's continue the adventure. Round 11. Well, aggressive. Uh, right. over here. I'm a sucker for an Aggie Orp mid. They're looking to exploit Inters again here. If yeah. Susan can find him behind the Jenny. It's going to be a tilter if you do get Orp like this. He's giving it up. But that's a enough space, right? If Sirison decides to go for a clear, Tizian can actually creep across into ladder room. And then again, they can be operating to try and close the door towards A because players have only really gone A, Alex. They have, yeah. I, I don't know if we've actually seen anything in, in any way or shape or form interesting outside of this part of the map. So I think players are really rolling it back to OG and Vertigo in a dink exchange. Taps tries the same trick again. This is going to go horribly for Crimbo. Yeah, just like that. Inters punishes the open site. And what went was a save. Now again is a 4v3, this time with worse health. But they're going for something. A stop nade and a stack oh. nade. Leaves him on 10 HP. Where's the spray? Where's the follow-up? Nothing. Tizian to flank. He can be noisy, but that's it. I, I think it... it it's oh, another one. Maybe they consider it here. Maybe they're coming in. Yeah, Faven does catch Sharksal on the side. The retake smoke is in. They're low. It's going to have to be Searson on it, I guess, unless Searson can be the bodyguard. It's just diffusing. Diffusing. It's just diffusing, guys. He's Hello? diffusing. Hello? Ah, la, 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 la. Did they not hear it? I just think that the thing is, and this has happened to players a couple of times. Remember, I think it was, was it Mirage yesterday? Where they took jungle control and then... Mobby Star Riders just diffused right under their nose. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, it's happened to them a couple times. I think they're like, only one of them spamming. Oh, no, make it two. Yeah, okay. Cheeky. Well, yeah, I mean... It's like criminal stuff let right me just there. Let me put that in my pocket, and uh, we'll bring that up for the desk. Should we need it if we keep talking about tilts? Because just when it looked like players had managed to put it off... Like, this, this was about to really equalize the half, right? If, yeah. you, if you force big to another three-man save and you get four rifles back through the round, the bomb explodes, mission really does start feeling like a completed T side. You've got five or six, likely leads to seven. And remember here, players decided to, to start on the on the T side of this. This is Big's choice. Maybe so. they wanted to get out of the way. Uh, well, I, and also I think it's like you get to set the tone of the game, right? As opposed to being dictated to, right? And seeing what they yeah. want to try and unravel. But uh, yeah, it, it hasn't been the hottest of starts here. Now things aren't out of control yet. Not by any means. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, it could start to get that way if Big continue to pack these rounds on, Naphany up to his usual tricks, and oh, there you go. So that Molly landing in the cusp of the smoke will get the extinguish. I can't quite fathom Tabson's uh, bravery here, considering that it is a 2-2-1 two, two, setup as it currently stands. I think they're just expecting it to be mid or B at some point because they've only gone A. No, Exiles can only encourage them as catching Tizian on the swing. I would oh, still just go A. Yeah, look at the space. No, not today. Tabson caught completely unawares, and unless Searson's feeling himself, what a quick flick. Stylish, but the round is concluded. Nafani makes that clear. Yeah, uh, players, by keeping it simple, have just outbrained big. So they've gone, all right, uh, surely. We're, we're so deep in the game round. This is round number 12 now. They're going to go somewhere else. They, they're going to try B, for sure. And then as soon as Tizian goes down, okay, you're piecing it together. Well, Faven's been the B anchor. Tizian's here too. Where's the gap? Well, it's Tabson standing there looking like a little bit of a tit just caught on the A site in the open. And uh, yeah, by players just not changing anything up, they secure themselves a simple round. It's just the crawl, just the creepy crawlers coming up the ramp. And oh, Faven's going to get two. No. Um, yeah, two bullets to two the head. Two bullets to the head. Thank you, Chad. Yay, two drums and a cymbal fall off of a cliff. Ba boom I see some issues for Big now, Alex. I do too. Um, and it does it does bode well for the adventure that we're about to go on that is this best of three. I thought, you know, I, I went to the, I missed the script meeting. Okay. I did, I'll be honest. I, I, I made some assumptions about how the script was read for today. Turns out players and Big Clan has a couple of extra chapters I may have missed and not anticipated. It's not just the players tilting off the face of the planet storyline. It is this game is very much a determining factor of who is going to be that third name in the uh, 
the playoff list. Yeah, I, I think that especially with the riders performing as they have, right? They they can still yep. they can still lose the rest of their games, right? And Big can still after this win all of their games. Let's assume that they lose this one, and, and it can still get real funky, right? Yep. Big can't come the Sunday, but just head to heads, it's um, going to get awkward. Yeah, it's going to get really really fruity. And the Movie Star Riders have already taken down players. If you're Big Clan, if you want to be in the Movie Star Rider spot, you probably have to beat them too. Yeah, that, that set the bar quite high, hasn't yeah. it? It's going to oh, so wait, we're, we're going to have to upset one of the favorites here as well. Yeah. Okay. Now this. It's actually really exciting for me. We get to see Faven tested. Okay, change. Do they want to double nade him though? Okay. Because they, they were looking towards default with those. I worry about the double nades. That's yep. the entry into what's yeah, A. Scrap that. Now, he's worked it out and taps in another opening death as well, the you first. Have to know it's going to be. Yeah. You just have to. Oh, you just have to. You have to gamble right now if you're big, right? Because you've been pressured at A so many times. You're, you're in a number disadvantage. What what do you do? You... Gamble stack A. Yeah, and and that's exactly and what they're starting they go to do. Mid to B. So now the fun and games is really whirring into action for Nafani. He's switched on now. Oh, this is just... Okay, so Let's is it fast out? forward about 90 seconds if we could. Thank you, uh, <sighs> Judge. You got any, where's your fun fact book? I left it in my room because I, I thought that, you know, this game... Today was the it's day. A, it's a serious vibe type of game. But I do have a fun fact for you. Yeah. And for any of the players listening, not the players in the server right now, any of the other players who are either getting be coming back to the hotel in the hotel right now, on the coffee machine... There's actually a second page. You hit the arrow down the bottom. Maybe, maybe, just maybe you want a hot chockey. They do a, there's, a, there's a hot chockey on there. I'm so glad you joined the hot chocolate revelation because I was introduced to something last night. Here we go. Yeah. Now, this was after work. Everyone was no longer working. But have you ever put amaretto or like di serrano in hot chocolate? I don't know what either of those two things are. Okay, it's like um, an almond uh, marzipan liqueur. No, I, ha I can't say I have. My God. Oh my goodness, it's Life changing. Like Christmas in a cup, Chad. Oh. I felt like all I was missing was a little bit of pumpkin spice. What about Crimbo in the server? Yeah, Crimbo in the server is uh, cancelled. So were the Christmas markets last year too. Yeah. Ah. Oh, Sirsa loses won. his AWP as well. They are actually right, right about now, really quite cream crackered. They've got nothing, zilch, nada. I have a Nished. I got a question. Yeah. Have you ever like stepped in a puddle before in shoes, and it's you, you've really you really stuffed up. It's quite uh, deep in the yeah. puddle. Deeper than you anticipated. Yeah, and then the socks are soaked and it's squidgy. Yeah. And you have no. You're not at home. No. And it just and you have to put up with that for the rest of the day. Yeah, and I always just start getting really paranoid that I'm going to be like a, a weird modern case of trench foot, and I'm going to be studied in some university. Okay, well, trench foot may be a, a great way to label this here because I think that the big have a bit of that right now. This just it just feels. Bleh. Like yeah. it's just you don't want it. You don't want it. You you want to change your socks. It's cold outside. You can't take your shoes off. Ah, it, it's not going to be a fun tail end of this first half for them by any means. And I, I really feel like they could have set themselves up for a massive bag. I feel like they could have had a nine or a ten round haul. And now, I think the players might even win the half, Alex. They'd take that any day of the week, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think they would. I still can't believe I just just seeing Shiro shaking his head in disbelief round three, and they have shaken off that uh, that coating of doubt. Admittedly, I think Big Clan have kind of given it, given them the way in again. Mm. Also, I don't know how critical I I can be with when Big Clan of integrating two new names so recently. There are going to be kinks, aren't there? Uh, yeah, I, I think the thing is, right, the, the addition of Favon was like, oh, they finally got him from Sprout. Yeah. That, that was the revelation with that, and he was meant to be the next big thing coming out of G Germany, right? And, and, and there's still time. There's still time for that to, to come into fruition. Uh, whereas Krimbo, I think, caught everybody off guard a little bit more so, uh, because I think Kido had been there for about two years. Him and Sirison joined at the same time. It was in early 2020 before we moved uh, completely online. Uh, and Krimbo was one that, that kind of... Well, at least for the international counter strike, you're thinking, oh, okay, this is this is a bit strange. They've just got the, the fragger they were looking for. They only needed to worry about changing one piece, but clearly something oh, there's the M4 gone. Clearly something they weren't happy with. Sirius is gonna pick that one up. Are they gonna peer on over down the ladder? Uh, he'll get to hold on to it. So good stuff. You think, yeah, it's just one play you have to integrate and maybe you get more firepower out of him. But uh apparently two changes was what the team thinks is necessary. Yeah, I mean, I, I also would love to just talk to the, to, to the big clan management just to, to, uh, to have the real kind of source of the issue. I reckon they probably set, oh, lovely finish. I think they probably set a goal for where big clan it want, needs to occupy in the world in the world standings. And I'm, I assume that these changes were fueled by that. You know, not content with being uh, 
top 15, top 10. Now, Faven's going for the Mopoz. No armor on his M4 and boosted up, so he can hopefully pull the trigger first. No aim punch required or punishable. And Tabson is doing oh, everything for the squad. If he, if he, he's been like the last three opening deaths on ramp, and now he's the opening kill. He is laying his life on the line in pursuit of glory, and now it is a question of who will take the eighth. And Hobbit's Avengers cut short as well. Good setup. Seen that one? Uh, I think uh, Complexity used to run something similar with like Poison at Sandbag and Blame would play towards top ramp. It's, it's, it's backing your individuals. Set up like that. Working very well. And now they're going to go for another one from Complexity's playbook. Excuse me, Tabson, could you? Thank you. Krimbo's got some pretty good hops. Leads to Axile's demise in a nice, safe dismount. Well, three kills where no trade potential there whatsoever. So great stuff from Big here to set themselves up for the half win. Just need to get the mandatory two. So this nose, there's been a flash and a nade on his nose. So he knows that Short's the next objective. Now he's calling for a teammate flash as well, but it looks like it will be deployed towards ramp instead. Flash taps and waits. Sirson, Sirson, you ballsy bastard. He goes straight through the flames just to ensure the frag is locked in. And now Inters has been thrust into a 1v4. I like it from Sirson. It's calculated. He, he secured the victory. You can see his backpack, I think. A little bit of a radio poking out from under the box, but Inters, he's got 20 seconds and he's got four to find. So no fun for him. Smoke and Molly would have been nice to force some fights, but... Still can't kill it. Thank you. Knocks the radio off of Tabson's back. But Big Clan win the half. Eight to seven. I couldn't call it. You should let us know who you think is going to take it over on the social media stratosphere as we take a quick break and come on back to see if this Vertigo surprise pick from Big can pay off in their favor. Hey guys, it's Robs. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on Vertigo B and how I prefer to anchor sometimes and maybe you can implement it to your own playstyle. So on Vertigo B, if you want to play around the site and you're mostly alone, then you can just use this box here to get the information if they're coming up the stairs. And if they do, you want to use your smoke and save your smoke for that. You can just use your smoke like this. And they're just gonna buy you a lot of space because you can like, okay, they're coming, you're gonna fall back. And now you're buying time for your teammates to rotate and they can always flash above the site here. You're just gonna play around the smoke. They might jump on top and you just uh, try to frag as much as you can. And the most important thing is that you just buy time. Good way to hold B is that when you have two people holding it and one of them is playing around this general area, so he's gonna hide and hold wood if they can boost and jump on top of it and you have your teammate around the site somewhere just plotting down the info if they're coming up if they execute and your teammate is selling that they're coming up you can also use your smoke here this is what i like to do sometimes and you're basically blocking this whole area and you can just hide here you can jump on top of this and you can again buy a lot of time and by then, like, your teammates are going to be window flashing above you. And you can just pick off all the guys here easily. And even fall back to quad, because if they molly it, you, it's going to obviously uh, dissipate and, and come back. So if you want to play aggressive, uh, I usually just play around wood. And I kind of try to capitalize on the timings. I'm feeling really comfortable here when I play, and sometimes I have a teammate right there holding a flash which is gonna plan like this i'll show you now you just go against this wall and i aim on this line and it has to go between the stairs and the wood so just about there and this flash would land right down the stairs and you, if you want you can peek down with it and just playing around the wood in general is is a good way to be aggressive and you can always fall back if if needed to do so 
All right, that was it. These were some quite common setups on, on Vertigo B, and you'll probably see some teams using them in Pro League. Uh, but if, you, if you'd like, you can try them out, and you can tell me how they work on social media. Thank you, Robs. Tell him how they work on social media, Let guys. Him know. I hope you do. Yeah, send him a tweet. He's a lovely guy, Robs. Got a big smile on his face. I just like it when he smiles. So does Twitch chat. Yeah. Well, no, not all been smiles. It's not all been sunshine and rainbows for either of these squads. I think they've gone through the entire spectrum of human emotion over the course of one half of counter. Uh, the first four rounds were pretty, pretty uh, curious indeed. But we are now setting our sights at an inseparable half. Let's see. Now the second fares, as there is Uto out for big. A couple of flashes, couple of smokes, a molly in play, a bit of early traction, and that one there is soaring through the skies towards B. Yeah, I wonder if that causes an early rotate. It does. Inter's early to respect the smoke. It means that the defense is going to be very, very barren on A. Nafani might call back for backup. He hears them now. Hobbit has to react, and we are going to have space. A cool idea. It has to be a retake A right now. They should be able to plant this bomb as long as they get past Nafani. Yeah, he decides he's going to make things difficult. Good click onto Searson. That's the bomb on Tabson, so he doesn't want to overcommit with this. Where's his teammate? Tizian's supposed to clear. That's the flash. That's not the frag Nafani was looking for, but now site clear. Inter's good click. Hobbit there as well. Oh, look at these USPs. They all connect. It's just Inters and Hobbit shrugging their shoulders and fragging up a storm. A furrowed brow on Nafani. He is here to play. That's actually the most important kill that Nafani got because it completely stopped the push. No, Nobody wanted to risk it. You're right, Tabs had the bomb. He didn't want to push and lose it. The rest of the team were off doing their silly smokes and fakes. And Well, the CTs can rotate and respond in time and then just absolutely pepper them apart. You can hear these USPs just popping off in unison. Yeah, Inter's here. A really nice pair of frags there. And Nafani exploding as he knows that that's going to put them with a, a knee up, a little leg up into the uh, second half of our first map. Big Clan's pick, worth reminding you, Vertigo, picked by the Big Clan boys. This is normally a, and has typically been a domain that we consider to be a player's map. Yeah, you saw in the graphic as well in the, in the pregame that uh, Janko, Kassad and Trace were doing that uh, the last three series these teams have played against each other, there's not been a single map won by Big. So, uh, yeah, Dust2 was a map that they consistently lost against them, right? As it's a map that we normally talk about Big being one of, the, one of their best. And the fact that players are able to handily deal with that is an issue. It makes the map pool seem a whole lot smaller when you can't pick your best. Now, uh, over towards B with a tower of blocks. The run boost in, and this would be good for Axile. Get him some confidence up here. The Famous, it's going to get, well, three. And then the USP with two. That's an ace, but it's an eco bash. So if you're excited about that, you're like me. You like the eeks. <laughs> I think Axel probably really did need the eeks, uh, as you've put it. That's going to accelerate him up to the top of the score. But with 16, adding a nice juicy five frag haul in one single round, just massacring them. You can see what they went for, though, in terms of the run boost. The idea being that he draws Axel's crosshair so wide on one side that the frag can happen uh, in his blind spot and his peripheral. But it didn't quite work out. Hobbit's lining up some util. Looks like it might be the NIP smoke. I wanted to see if it was. Looks like it, yeah. I can show you. Oh. Oh, it's bugged. Oh. That's a real... Uh, yeah, his has fallen through the floor. So uh, hasn't achieved what they were hoping for. I can show you how to throw that one if you want, Alex. Yes, please, because I, I saw the lineup on Hampus and it looked like doable. You know, you just stand there and left click. What I do is I go, uh, look at the look at the door frame. There's a splotch on the wall I line it up with. Door uh, frame splotch. After the splotch. Oh. 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 Did they hear that? They surely must have. Inters, Inters is, is on high there. alert. Oh, Tizian. I felt like he had just like a lot of unconfirmed map control, but I think that single lick of the flame has cancelled that whole exciting prospect. Which is, uh, Look, yeah, yeah, the, they might, the they gap of a lifetime gone before your very eyes. They definitely heard it. I mean, in any, in one way, I suppose it's mission accomplished because it's pulled Axel completely into a mid clear. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't really like what that implied, so they've gone looking for answers. They might find more than they bargained for if he keeps pushing, if he ends up flanking, but... Yeah, well, he can just keep going now, can't he? Oh, Inters is just throwing a block smoke at B as well, so oh. he might get spot on the ladder here. That's why he's hanging to the right. Timing, timing. Um, 
Okay, guys, I have the entire round. He gets the orb for first. Grimbo's baffing around with his rifle and exile. Another high impact round. They're trying to run into his sight, but Inters is here to for the fight. Double from Inters. Big collapsing here. And there's not a single frag back. There is nothing. No signs of life from Big. Two rounds in. I really like that from Axel, the aggressive maneuver, right? He, he tends to just sit back and, and let the game come to him. But I, I think some of the issues with this team is there's not enough playmakers, right? We know Nafani's a playmaker, but this is great. This is beautiful stuff. Look at this double kill. It's completely unraveled the round before it even gets started. So really, really good stuff now as players get up to the double digis. You can count that on two hands, everybody. Oh, there's the tutorial for you. That was actually... They're doing this from a different position. Yeah. And Only slightly, though. It's worked. There we go. Maybe Hampus is a little bit more convoluted. Yeah. Ooh, a lovely word, too. Tizian gonna walk in and lose his head in approximately three, two... Down goes Tizzy. Yeah, well counted there, Alex. Thank you, I've been working on my counting. This is a little bit of a lurky smoke here that uh, Krimbo's gonna throw. I guess he's not gonna throw it. It tries to assist in alleviating pressure towards the heaven position, but... Uh, He's going to do it more as a fake. Now, Hobbit's here, Axel's here, Inters is here. Sounds like more than enough players who are here. And yeah, there they go. Going to light up the scoreboard, chipping away as Axel. I just think after Ancient yesterday, you're going to you're gonna want to just get back in it and really unleash the beast. I, I, you know, I hadn't even made that connection for some reason, but you're right. It was, Axel was one of the candidates, and he's never one of the candidates. No, it, it was honestly that entire ancient game was two players. It was it was just, just Shiro and Hobbit. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense why uh, they were in dismay yesterday. How long? I was going to say how long is Nafi to hold on to his MP9, but uh, they've opted to get the AWP out right now, so he'll be into an M4 at this juncture. So no more worries about the, the P shooter. Do you know who got a uh, a Bison clip yesterday? And Rush is like the only Bison clip that Rush can even reference. Smoo, you got a Bison clip. This team against Smoo's squad he's playing for, they rush B, that, yeah. they didn't clear Sandbag, and Smoo gets four kills. But Rush is using that to justify his Bison purchases. But does he think he's going to get four kills with it? If Rush gets four kills on a gun round with a Bison, I'll never say anything again. Deal. 100% deal. You shouldn't have told him that. That's, now He's, he's only going to buy the Bison. He's got a purpose now. Oh, that's fine. When he, yeah. Uh, no, that's fine, actually. Hey, uh, more kills for me. He gets to try and beat out Axel. Now, I wouldn't... I, I, you know, if it was our tier list, I think it's probably Buster, Axel, then Faven. Uh, <laughs> let's see if Faven can actually change my mind. I can see this off angle. He's living in. And that's a nice find from Axel. Bring in the fight. Faven was very passive on B. Axel's going to remain a constant information drip for his team. He's just killed B. And it's going to actually force more bodies to go in and try and acknowledge it. This time, no Axel flank. The, uh, the round is not over before they reach the site. Krembo's going to be arriving late through middle. Uh, the issue is they have a ramp control, so they can play two mid. Yeah, good point. Well made. Touche. Voulez-vous. Sisqua. <laughs> Bloody hell, Chad. <laughs> good find from Grimbo. Sisqua? <laughs> oh, Moulin Rouge, I thought you were going... Yeah, Sisqua. Voulez-vous. Na, na, I don't know, man, because this is still not looking tickety-boo. That's a big, big frag from Tizian. Pun absolutely not intended. They just chose a bad name. Shiro's a dead man. Great catch. Tizian's completely booked him. Now Nafani from the stairs. This could still go wrong. I think he's been heard here. Yeah, I think that was a loud step, and the smoke implies as such. He can wrap this... Oh, yeah, he could get a good vision here. <gasps> Tabson just has to stand still. He can win the... Ra oh, and a lovely sound cue to award them in. <laughs> We did that. That's the first T round we've seen from the German squad. It took us five rounds, but now they post it. That is 9 to 11. Quick look at the scores on the doors. Tabson still head and shoulders above the rest. Almost 10 frags separating Tabson from the rest of the squad. Haven't got like enough players from Big Clan yet in it online. This was a highly impactful Tizian double that has enabled them to post their first round. It can't just be Tabson, though. You can see that he's going to get you your, your closing pair, but there has to be someone else to kick down Ooh. that door. And yes, frustrations are high. Frustrations clearly high. Yeah, higher than I think we've maybe ever seen them, to be quite honest with you. But That's... there's another Axel opener. Let's see if they can convert this time around. Faven is, uh, yeah, he's, he's not having a great time over there being the B lobby lurk, is he? Tabson's going to have to try and claw something back. Nafani's hearing a lot of this, and if he wants if he wants to pivot, he has to worry about the orb. Apparently, you don't have to pivot, because Sirison's got those keen eagle eyes. He caught you through the tarpaulin. Tarpaulin.
can understand why we started calling it tarp, right? If you're working with a tarpaulin, mm. you probably call it a tarpaulin to your colleagues three times before you're like, mate, pass us the tarp. You only do that in that like, trade school, and yeah. then after that, you, you get a bit more slangy. There's so many weird names for tools. Like the, my, I, I, I don't know if this is what did universal. You call, what did you call? Like, what was the funniest? A shovel was called a banjo. Probably because it's a lot of fun to say, yo, you seen my banjo? <laughs> it's a lot more fun than saying, have you seen my shovel? Yeah. Well, it's, A exec. This is actually potential. Well, Axel's here, flashing itself. forward, flashing yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah, that, it's in the hands. And he's just going to catch the. Oh! oh! That's an orky momo. I can't believe it. I feel so justified and vindicated. Even the pros do it. My heart stopped. Even the pros do it, Chad. It's fine. He had a silencer oopsie. Oh. Oh, we're all, we can just say we're like Axar. He's got 23 frags in a pro match, boys. You are just as just the same kind of player as him. Oh, my golly gosh. Players are humans too. My giddy aunt. Oh, whoa. And he actually couldn't have got a better timing, by the way. Like, it, <laughs> it was like two players with nades pulled and Tabson was looking the wrong way. Can we play that round again, please? Yeah, can we just have a replay, folks? And now Hobbit might even lose his white rifle. Lovely position to put himself in. Now listen, Axile, don't kill Faven at the start of the round because that seems to be the key to big success. So don't, next round, don't kill him at the start and we'll see what happens. Ah, that, that one, it's physical pain. No, if you're Axile, you just want to grab the banjo and dig yourself an early grave, don't you? You just want to grab the banjo, dig six feet deep and hop in. Oh, that one really quite hurts. Oh, yeah. It? I mean, yeah, there's that's a. I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen that before. Look at this wall bang. He's such a great B geek. Faven didn't even get to see him. Two that's... geeky kills. Those are the two openers. Nice. Both geek lord stuff right there. Yeah, it is. Now let's have a look at Axile. Here it comes. So, yeah. Ah, I take it back. I take it back. Oh, no. Oh. You're just like Axile chat. It's fine. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Okay, well. Ah. <laughs> uh, moments before disaster. Things I wish I could unsee. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Okay, all right. Group C. Double digis. Map one. Day 462. And He's Haven, across! Haven's not dead in it. Oh! But, uh, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. They're actually going to try and punish Axel here. I guess they want to tilt him off the face of the planet, so. Oh. Oh, Axel handles business on the first. Crimbo keeps it interesting. A well tracked shot into. Does not finish with the nade just yet. Could do. One right back. Look at this space at A, though. This yeah. is so punishing. Tapson is just going to slink on in. This is great. Now, Hobbit boosted up. That's not a common pre-aim. Oh, he is pre-aiming. You know, back turn. Searson's not going to trade. There is a sh shot missed. Well placed, Nade. Doing a lot here, Hobbit. Great Molotov. Now, that stops a lot of the funny business in that gap. It could enable Faven to get the bomb down uncontested. So, three on three retake required into through the elevator. Searson has the overwatch, says the smoke fades. He Beautiful. will hit a great shot. Hobbit, probably the more threatening of the bunch, gone. Have to consider a save. Yeah, that's three consecutive rounds, and that is so insane. Both, uh, actually, in all three, the first two was against Faven. In this one here, it was against Tizian. But Axile has opened up the last three rounds consecutively, and they have lost those rounds. And I know this was different Ooh, because yeah. there was more trading, but the number advantage have been in the player's favor for the three gun rounds that Big have been able to consolidate. So uh, this is this is curious scenes here. Terrorists win. Ooh, finances bleak. 46 for Hobbit. We're going to get Inters on the M4. That's the last timeout. That wasn't the last. Yeah, so Groove is on the mic. Yeah, this has uh, happened very quickly. And in the early stages, like I was saying in the first half, I thought Big could have gotten more CT sided rounds here. And now, well, <laughs> sure, the silence a moment it really helped them out. But 
they are clawing their way back into this. You know, and I'm sure we've over overdramatized. It could have easily just been an Axel headshot, and he immediately dinged in return. You know, one for one. It's not like it was the rounder, but it could. Uh, it's all of the unknowns, the unfathomables, the, the we'll never knows uh, that came with that moment. Now at 11:11, someone would tell you to make a wish. Well, it's got legs to it. Certainly does. And so does Rushley. Haven't shouted him out. Rushley, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Had his birthday yesterday. I believe he's 20. Eight. Eight. Born nine. nine. And Axel be in favor again. He's going to nearly take two. Thank God Grimbo's there. But again, it's Chad. The fourth time the that's charm. That's the fourth opening frag from Axile. Can there be one player's conversion? More promising now with Crimbo's departure. Well, he might catch them here through the... Oh, he might catch them just through the, the metal here. Taps and pokes his head up, and he's going to go on down. I thought that was going to go against them regardless. So Intus is lucky to scratch his way through that. This has to be a player's round. It has to be. There's no way past it. I mean, the, there's only one way in which this doesn't end uh, with players taking a round, and this, is, this isn't it, actually. Nafani... That's the um, the I'm coming mating call, right? You know, you're making it quite, you, you, you know, you're jiggling around the barrel. I'm on my way. It comes. I'm on my way. It does betray us more often than we may realize that long AWP barrel. And Shiro's by the opposite. Perfect line, deep into the stairs. Which animal do you think has the longest snoz? I reckon. I'm 29. Nine. Congratulations. Happy birthday for yesterday, Rush. I didn't say anything in the social media stratosphere. I hope you, that doesn't imply that I don't, your I don't, friendship, I I don't think. care about you. It uh, invalidates your friendship, actually. Yeah. He did, he did observe the other map. Yeah. Could have had so many opportunities. I acknowledge that you were born 29 years ago. He'll get over it. Yeah. So anyway, animal with the longest snoz. Uh, probably an the narwhal. It's not real. Narwhals are real, bro. Don't, don't get me like the Kevin McAllister thing, you're no, right. This isn't a Kevin McAllister thing. Narwhals are real. They use it. It's like a really overgrown tooth. They're like the real unicorns of the sea, Chad. Don't, don't shake your head at me. Narwhals are a real thing, Chad. Tell him. And I'll tell you about this round while he's actually Googling it, bro. Look at them. Oh, shit. Yeah. Reality just slapped you in the face, didn't it? Like a cold bucket of water, Birchill. I know Kevin McAllister. I've, I, I trolled you a little bit. We do a little trolling. Narwhals, narwhals. I don't know if it's a nose, though. Yeah, no, more of a horn. An overgrown tooth, yeah. All right, fair. What about those monkeys with the big flaccid noses? Are they bonobos? But no, no. Hobbit. Down and out. Four CTs remain as they are fully gathered here. So the full big clan commit here. We get to see the smokes lined up. Shiro trying to... Oh, yes. No, 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 no. That smoke has to be used to extinguish. Nafani run down. The pace of this is better for Big. Could still go wrong. No bomb plant. No real setup smokes. And, oof, great nade. Inters has cut Faven down to size, but the bomb now down, and a question remains. Will they go? Oh! Yes, they will. Axile arrives and lays down the law. What a transfer into both of them, and there's nearly another. Shot from Faven, yeah, though. Yeah, but damn, Faven was 50 HP. That could have been a one to the head. He can flash for Tizzy in here when he the smoke to. starts to, to fade. There's the flash. There's the frag. He calls it clear. Shiro in the 1v1. Faven, a lot of pressure on the new kid. It's a fake. It's a fake. And he gets the information safely. Tuck in, tuck in. And now the mission is complete. Big Clan will make it a 12, but hard fought. And you can hear how much it means to them. Does he survive? Oh! oh. I thought he was going to go time it to perfection. It's just not possible. Yeah, I think the low HP. Yeah. And uh... like I was thinking, like, you know, if he just it's a perfection. Geronimo! Bomb explodes. He lives with one HP and we reset. Yeah, he gets grabbed out of the yeah, spot. Yeah, exactly. Saved by the calculation strafe. Well, both teams have broken buys right now. Famuses and Galil seem to make up the lion's share, and Sirison is going to be into a scout, so Shira has the biggest of the Scopey boys, and that was a nice little play there. Axar almost made it doable. Back into the thicker things early. Nafani on the prowl. He's been able to get himself some ramp space. Now, so they really want to risk one of these M4s. They only have two. Oh, Shiro's actually taking a tag. So, Sirison strikes first with that scout. 
It blocked them from heading towards A, right? So making sure they can't mount scaffolding means that they only have to channel into one angle, which they've actually removed that angle and the head of Tabson right there. That one is going to really sting. Big leg up, big leg up into the round and to find one back. Hobbit somehow makes that FAMAS sing. Where did Searson's weapon go? Uh, yeah, that... I think he was trying to get the Tabson AK, right? So he's, he's dropped the scout so he can get on in here to scoop that up, but spending a lot of time finding it has now got it, and oh, they still need to break Nafani and Shiro, who are both playing this scaff position. I mean, this does... I mean, there's a potential for, for Mag and... Uh oh Yeah, real problem. Real uh -oh. problem. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Real uh -oh. problem. Uh -oh. Searson has just opened up the A site. And, and he got the AWP. What a swing. Four versus three becomes 2v3. I feel like they have to save again, though. Like, like how do you go for this? 2,400 loss bonus into the next tier? They're not going to get caught out by an Axile ramp again, are they? Ah, uh, maybe, 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 maybe not. Well, that one is done. I just wanted to see where into smoke lineup goes because it was a bit different to the one I normally see. Was it Crane? It's just a retake smoke, I think. Yeah, where is it? Crane. There you crane? go. Oh, okay. Flying around. You, but uh, big back in the lead. And uh, look, in the last, where are we looking here? Six rounds of play, they've won five. So this half has been uh, absolutely spun on its head right now. Keeping a lid on things as well. Right, I'm, I'm trying to be a fly on a wall when we can hear those comms, just to listen, right? Uh, just to try and gauge the emotions, where it's at, who's talking a lot. And uh, this one here, you know, a couple of misses from Shiro. He knew that he had to fight, but that's great. Seriously showing that he is dynamic. Yeah, and every uh, Orpo in particular went on the rifle will have a, such a firm grasp of when you've successfully baited a shot. He hears the first, he's still alive. He hears the second, he's still alive. That has to be his kill. He makes the progressions, he knows there's a window, and he jumps straight through it. NK, you can see the coach of Big Clan is having a very heated debate with Tabson. Understandably so, because right now with the loss bonus where it was at coming into this round, this should be Big's 14. It's likely just to be a couple of upgraded pistols and the one saved M4. That's all they need to get past here. This is your best opportunity right now to get yourself up to 14. So have that chat, make sure everybody's on the same page and execute with perfection because players, they're starting to falter here. Yeah, this could be it. You lose your 14th, you keep everyone alive, you got funds to force the 50th, 16th, eventually. This one's the gimme. You can see an alternate approach from Favor. Now, he hasn't been having the most fun up against Axel's B hold, and they've gone forward to mid to B, so there is a huge opportunity to walk into the A site for free. Yeah, so, so the real question is here, how long do big take, right? Because the longer they take, the chance for players to push or rotate comes on in. Now, they would have to do it silently because we know how this map plays out. Big would be able to hear everything going on above them, but right now, combing through. Favor not home. Rotation now starting to cheat over. This Hobbit flash and go, this is everything for players. Tabson catching one just ahead of that move. Nafani trying to actually get info back. Oh, Tabson could get caught out here. Did he get spotted? I think they did. They spied him out. And that's the end of Nafani's 5-7 potency. Hubba's flash has already been used. Yeah. So, uh, so this much is info. It. You saw that Inters caught a glimpse of at least two towards the sandbag side. So I guess Inters wants to keep hold of what he brought into this. He's already heading to mid to save. Yeah, and, and they need it, right? Because going into this next round, it's 2,900. They'll have enough to purchase, but it's not done just yet, right? There's still a real opportunity for them to keep themselves in this game. Ancient coming up next. I almost feel like we're, we're guaranteed to get ourselves a three-map affair here for the opener of our Friday. But uh, if players continue to have some of these wobbles, we saw it happen yesterday. It's definitely possible here. This would be... Look, we haven't had G2. We haven't had Vitality. Outsiders didn't make it. Could you imagine if we don't get players as well? I mean, I can. I can totally imagine a world like that just by... <laughs> by virtue of how the other groups have gone. Yeah, it's more so I guess we don't want to. Mm, don't want to live in that world, man. But, uh, I mean, it's always a case of, especially when the round robin best of threes, those first couple of days, those results will come back and haunt you. You have to, but it sounds so stupid, doesn't it, when you boil it down, but you just have to be everyone that's in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's just not how it works out. 
Big Clan coming in with a very threatening Vertigo pick. They have picked it up against the players and now are two rounds away from converting the punish. I'm looking forward to hearing what the desk has to say in review of this. And that is going to be coming up straight after the conclusion here. You got Trace, Stunner, Sorrentus, Cassada, and YNK. Big brains to be picked. And Nafani looking for his 10th frag to pick up. Drops a defensive delay smoke on yeah. the corner, but... It keeps dropping, right? This has happened to them a few times, either with the set throw or on the fly. And that's not what you're trying to gain. Now, the sound... Wow. Oh, my Lord. What a find from Searson. That, I don't think I've seen that all too often. At least not as quickly and effectively as that. Axile just caught as he exposed himself to the util flash. That's one of those moments where just with the x-ray, you can see what's about to happen. Like, it's a, it's the car crash that goes in slow motion. Yeah. Right? You, yeah. you can, you're witnessing it, and you just know. Oh, and now you know it's about to get very, very tough for players here to defend in round 27. So what's, the, what's the dream scenario? You know there's going to be someone who has to rotate into B with the absence of Axile. So do you want to just commit to it or, or sell it? It looks like it is going to be the former. Yeah, the thing is, Nafani's poking forward here. So if he clears out, they can still rotate Hobbit back in time. Shiro won't be able to respond. He's stuck at Sandbag. And actually, Nafani's parked the bus. So Inters, this is all on you, my friend. Your smoke, your molly, it has to do it all. Inters to try and save players. Extinguish, nade. They know he's there. 50 HP and staring into the grave no void. Flash for him. That'll oh. do nicely. Double nades. There's already two smokes up as well. Nice find from Hobbit. He Time's an issue. Has to save them now, and he has got the bomb loose again. Oh my God! Nine seconds. Crimbo, move. Pick it up. Four. Bodyguard down. Tizian saves the round. Tizian has saved. Oh, no, he hasn't. Denied by oh, yeah. Nafani in the last second. Good God, that was close. Oh. I thought Tizian had done enough, but Nafani was sprinting the whole time from a ramp push. And with one second to spare, I, I would hazard a guess less than a second in that, Chad. That is crazy. That Molotov that was thrown on top site is why it got so awkward, because even if they a wanted Hobbit. to plant the bomb, they couldn't get it down. So, Damn. yeah, Hobbit's done an awful lot in that situation. Oh, they've kept themselves alive, but only just... And this is the opener, right? This is with the X-ray. You can see this was coming, just walking straight in. The all perfect weapon for the job. Ah, dearie me. Okay, well, we are back underway right now. Nafani's already towards top ramp. Axel trying his luck over towards B. A big nade right there. Oh, look at the damage. Tons of damage. Shifts away. Three members of Big Clan now within that one-shot M4 headshot. No more will we have a dink exchange favoring that of the AK. And maybe more importantly for Shiro's UMP as well. This is going to help him out a lot in some of these fights. And they might have to use him over towards Shaw on this crane position, ready to take contact early. You can't sit back and play retake with the UMP. So some more proactive play ahead here as Big are bearing their sights down on the A bomb site. This Molly combo could be great. Unleashed it. It's going to segregate the pack. It's actually going to thrust all of them forward. Fifty seconds as they resmoke short. Hobbit caught one elsewhere. And there was Tabson to fall down as well, which is the leader of the big clan pack. Forty seconds and they are just congregating into a stack. This is such a luxury for players. They get to set everyone up. Nightmare to clear now. Searson's low HP and likely gonna Oh, that's nice. Yeah, damn. Hobbit actually with the boost finds the AWPA. And they've only got 25 seconds now. Actively fighting a little bit of you to all the biggest of flash pushes. Faven and Tizian make it interesting. What a shot out of Crimbo. Faven plants. Axel thrust into an impossible one versus three, and he will throw in the towel. It looked very sketchy there for Big Clan. Oh, that shot that Crimbo gets onto Nafani, right? He was just spamming through over towards the short position and gets them one back there. If he didn't get that kill, Hobbit had the one from top side on a Sirius, and then it would have been a three on five situation. So that was a very, very important kill to get. And then they just exploded, and it still caught the players off guard. So bigger the first to 15 here. And you consider where the finances are at right now. 2,400 is the loss bonus into the next. Axel could drop an M4. Four, that is looking like it's going to be it. And it's not the first time players have had to operate with lion's share of Famai, and, and they're going to have to do that again. Look at this one. Cheeky little off angle here by Hobbit. Not an expected clear by any means, but how much does Hobbit have to do to try exactly. and keep his team in it? 
then the segregation, left side smoke, isolate the short fight, come on in, Faven hits a big one onto Hobbit, and then Krimbo, he wins the round with that kill right there. Great stuff from the young gun. There's a deeper smoke on left side. It does mean that if, you want, if you're an elevator and you want to contribute, Krimbo has your line, has your ticket. So frustrations mount. And then two rounds, two opportunities for Big Clan to finish it here in regulation. Like the best opportunity, doesn't this it? This is the best opportunity. Good God, look how light their util's gonna be. If you just don't die in the first 20 seconds, you're gonna have such an advantage. Uh, precisely, precisely when you look at the smoke throughout. Oh, oh, I mean, I was talking to Big Clan, but Nafani is the first candidate. So low, oh. nice, fine. Shiro bails them out of trouble, and Nafani has caught them out. What, 10 HP? Tabson completely booked by the avant-garde maneuver. Have to take some space, right? They have to take something back. They know this is happening, and Shiro repositions, but goes on down. The dink, it's not enough. Looks like they can start to set up and play in limbo in this mid position right now. Faven can join the tail of the pack with the Doing bomb. It again. Not again, Napani, you criminal! That's so naughty! He had 10 HP for all three of his SMG frags, and that's the power of positioning, folks. We said this was their best opportunity, and it's been squandered. Faven knows Inters his left side, does he? I guess, no, I'm not even sure if he's ready for that. Yeah, Inters MP9, good for it. Power for power, they shred through with just the SMGs. And what a contrast from the round prior. Oh dear. Big Clan, I mean, that is, uh, that's one that's gonna perhaps lead us straight to overtime. You've went with all the bells, the whistles, the orbs, the mollies. And all it takes is a little bit of magic from Navi. Look at him breaking all the rules, Big Clan. How German of them. They expected him to follow the rules. Yeah, well, he crossed the uh, road when the light was red. There's no cars coming. Yeah. So he survived. Exactly. Yeah, funny that. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, god damn. Hobbit gets a, a double. Favoured has kept it level. Uh, welcome to the last round of regulation, folks. It's already deep. We're in a 3v3 mid round with. Walking through a smoke into Shiro. The, the, everyone is throwing caution to the wind here, trying to find uh, a little bit of a Nafani timing. It's the two newer additions here, two on three situation for the two of them to get this done. It's not going to be an easy task. But this is very cool. You get to see Krimbo and Faven partner up, demonstrate value directly to their more experienced colleagues. Now, they must know a flank is coming. There is a timer on their progression before they have to worry about ramp. And they've beaten it. Now Shiro's playing a very passive line and he will ward them off. They know where he is, they know there's a flank potentially. And that's perfect from Nafani. Couldn't ask for more. Completes his objective, denies the plant. And Faven, I assume, was spotted short with Shiro. So, first good crosshair placement. He'd love another fight before that bomb. And he's got 30 seconds to find it. Fake. Didn't even fake it. Fake, but it doesn't stop. It. Oh, caught out and saved by the orb. We go to overtime. 15 15. So much to play for here. This is Group C. Players already with a blip on the record. They have to convert up against Big. And the pocket pick of Vertigo goes to OT. We have uh, Groove as a coach for for hundred percent. I mean, he, he gonna focus on his role. Now I think uh, he gonna do more. I don't know to be honest. He did already a lot for us. <laughs> now I think he gonna do even more. And of course, it's gonna help help a lot. And we need it right now. NK is now our coach. Like four months ago, um, he changed us a bit I would say we are now more structured and we have like a more healthier plan outside of the game and he's also more calm than the other ones I would say and he's also also pushing us to the limit um, than before so he is doing a quite good job I would say yeah
Strap in, folks. We're off to overtime and only on the first map of this series. So we are getting your afternoon started on a Friday with everything you need. Good Counter-Strike. We got the Germans on one side with two new names and they do seem to be starting to demonstrate a whole lot of uh, threatening presence in the serve. Admittedly, hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows. Big, I think, have victims to unforced errors as much as players have. Yeah, it's hard to see how big win this one now. Their T side was very flat. There was multiple rounds in a row where Axel gets the opening kill and then Big were fortunate enough to pick it up and if that continues it's not going to continue to fall in their favor so let's see yeah we need to see a little bit more convincing out of this t side from big clan nafany ratting smokes he's gotten away with it once or twice on an smg you notice late as well when it was crunch time that he oh. started to get a bit more pep in his step with how much aggression he was bringing to the table and starting to find to impact they needed that now you know Nafany pushing ramp smokes is not going to be a surprise. Big have watched the demo. Uh, they know what he likes to do on this map, and Searson's pre-fires make that clear. Well, straight back towards B here, and this is looking good for players now. Axile and Inters both over towards the B bomb site now. Axile's having a great game here. I think Inters has switched on to this. And Hobbit's also pushing mid. So, uh, oh, that may have been heard. It was. Oh, a horrible death for, for Faven to stomach, and Tizian's just gone down in mid. All right, Tabson's just... Decided he's got to take off the gloves. Bare knuckle boxing his way into B. This time I do this all on my own. Everyone in front of him and everyone to retake the site. I don't feel like Searson's going to walk that bomb in on his own. He's going to here. count on a boost to peek over this, and it's going to enable Shiro for... Uh, oh, it's actually, a big yeah, gap. Huge Ooh. gap. Cancel that. Flash is there, and oh, shots are connecting. Scary stuff. It's going to fade. 2v3, Nafni eventually is going to arrive on the stairs. Bomb Their bomb's now down. So much pressure on that B stairs player. Just making noise right now to keep them glued towards these positions. You can see Nafni starting to activate. Oh, great catch. All onto Crimbo now. And three, too easy to retake the site. Players will recover. Thompson, I mean, you know, I, I really do. I don't know if I was, you know, over romanticizing it, but it does seem like it was just a case of, all right, I'll do everything I can. And when Thompson comes online, he does get. Two frags and a bomb plant out of it. Just not enough with the absence of contribution from his teammates. Favored a nasty death. That crouch release killed him. Like, I, it's actually, I don't know whether it was forced by a shot through the boards, but he straight up just accidentally slipped the finger off the crouch. His head came up and Inters immediately lined up an instant wall bang headshot. Yeah, and this was good by Nafani as well. The fact that uh, his two teammates were stranded behind smokes, he just waited until that faded. This is one of the things, you know, that... Look, obviously, at the lower levels of Counter-Strike, people don't account for, but when something's smoked, they're going to be glued on the other position. There's an opener. Quick from Sirison. Nafani, the hero of last round, in an early grave. Nades back either way. Molly's going to hold Shiro from more fights. Tabson, well, he's doing what you said he does. He's taking some space. When he must opens up onto Shiro, no less. I like that. Tabson's just cleared ramp. Never mind. Yeah. Like, he's taking a leaf out of the, uh, I'll just do it all on my own book. He, he shouldn't have got away with that, but no. that's the thing. He's having that type of game that you're talking about here, so he's just <laughs> destroyed them. He's just absolutely destroyed them because he was going up solo, right? And there was so much contact there. There was the mid walk. There was obviously presence elsewhere, and he just gets two kills from, from absolutely nowhere. So... Great stuff from Tabson. If that's the way they win rounds, then maybe they can win this game. This is the opener. Peeking before the smoke blooms. Nafani getting a bit cheeky with it. Shiro not ready for that aggression. And then this over the top of the one way, right? Hobbit doing the cheeky top ramp one way there. So good stuff from Tabson. Leading by example. Yeah, let's see if they can replicate it. Two on the T side would be such a big win for Big. They are struggling to close out on their T side in regulation. And now, well, 1-1. One, one. Let's see if... They can win another one. Same flight path, Thompson trying to walk on in and... Doing his best Nafani impression. Yeah, uh, Shiro though, doesn't let that go. Quick public beheading. Well, there's the can opener gone. So now you're going to have to do it with, uh, I, I don't know, I was going to say a knife, but maybe a fork and a spoon. Mm, or a spork. Now, we all saw that trajectory. It could still mean there's someone there, but we'll operate under the assumption that it's not occupied. I can't believe how many feet are planted away from A, given how much is committed here. Obviously, no answers, no information. You're hearing one throwing a lot of nades and steps. And we are seeing Hobbit cheat back over, so... 
it does come down to just hitting some crazy shots. Shiro posted up in a passive line. There's still smokes here to go for a full site execute. And th th they are baiting out more utility as every second whittles off the clock here. So you can see them lining up the nades now. But Hobbit's here with Nafani to lock down short. He wants a flash. He gets one. One was anti. Tizian, good for it. Experience prevails. Playing anti-flash immediately contributes a double. Now this boost, they've been pulling it off successfully. Won't be able to contest the plant if Tizian gets it down, which he has. 3v3 retake. Big Clan, they're close now. This is half of the, the battle to getting a second round on the board here in overtime. MR3. Inters has some Yuto here. There's one flash. Tizian not going to activate, just going to look for a peek. Time, bomb halfway gone. Yeah, big find from Tizian. He's actually winning this round on his own here. Three frags does go down. Silenced by Inters. No smoke after that one. Careful now. Searson really was overextending a little. Time sensitive. They just have to def stop the defuse. And they will. 17. And listen to what that means to them. They know hard part may have just been dealt with. You've got to convert, but you've got yourself the leg up. You are once again in control of this game. Yeah, a bit more fired up there than towards the tail end of regulation, right? I think in there they, they knew that they could have closed it. But here, now that it's uh, on like Donkey Kong, yeah, great stuff from Tizian, really. Uh, the impact there, especially after losing Tabson early. And, and then this, right? The flash helped him then set up on that line. If he was just sitting in the bomb box, he would have had to worry about just little slight jiggles. So the flash to enable him to get a, a deeper line. But here we go, CT side, Nafani up to his usual tricks. Yeah, it's posted up. Searson's responsible for it. Well, they know now. Okay, looks like Searson's about to have a very hot and steamy welcome. He can jump on the railing and play over this smoke. That's if they don't spray, nade. I mean, they know they're so close to an opening kill here. Bang. Oh, oh, well, that's the AWPer just gone by nades alone. Very committed position, but a one way. Betrays them. Good chance on the multi. Taps and kills Crimbo. And that leaves them really up the creek without the paddle. It's up to Tizian again to try and be the hero. And he's rocking the M4A4. He's about to roll back the years. Who needs a silencer when you've just got a loud and proud M4 down now? And that's the round concluded. Yeah, the, Something as simple as that. I think the thing with that play right there, they're trying to re-aggress top ramp and the, the spacing, it's very tight. And I think they're both trying to take advantage of that one-way smoke there. Or Krimbo wants to be close to make sure he trades off of Tabson, but actually he just, you know, makes it so difficult. <laughs> it makes it so, so excuse difficult. Me, excuse yeah. me, excuse yeah. <laughs> me. And I get it, I get it. He's trying to swing. He's he's trying to swing because Tabson's in a fight, but yeah. it, it's it's cost them a lot there. Oh, yeah, I mean, there are own full stairs all over the shop. All square, all even. Big clan's pick. Ancient next. Ancient next. God, strap me in for Ancient. They are progressing, and I can't help but feel that Sis and... He's going to have to worry about the scaf wide swing eventually, no? Is that not anyone's responsibility? That molly's just faded, right? So they have to know now they okay. need to pivot back. But they're, they're staying Ooh. very forward, very stubborn oh. on this. Oh, it's an absolute massacre. Hobbit takes two ramp holders down in the same amount of seconds. And that will propel them into a man advantage on the site. Tizian has to cheat favor in the same. That could have been it. That could have been the round right there. Big Clan, got to hold on now. Crimbo has to deliver. And Crimbo spraying into the smoke for a double, puts the bomb on the floor, nearly enters as well. May not expect Tizian, maybe. They won't expect Tizian. Now he's got the bomb in the 1v2. Crimbo and Tizian combining for a 2v4. He gets the double. The new kid on the block, and with 20 seconds, he knows Axel has to plan A. Oh, this is a great play. If Tizian gets across towards Sandbag, I feel like he's won the round just by pos positioning alone. I mean, unless Axel gets hit the strafe and plants backside. Oh, smoke. Oh. Fake? Fake? You can't fake, there's no time! Less! Oh, you hit the shot, Tizian and Crimbo. What a recovery for Big Clan.
The German side feeling themselves. Krimbo, a big high impact round. He had three players in front of him in that smoke, and he takes two and the round. Jeez, yeah, impact felt there in a big way. This was Hobbit's double opener. This is a three on five from the very Whoa. beginning, right? And then Krimbo gets this. I think that Faven goes down during this spray, and then the round, it just disintegrates here for that of players. Tizian with a very good heads up maneuver there late. And starting to feel, what can they do right, really, players? You get the two openings and you still can't convert it. Just one more now for Big. They've been here before. I can't believe they recovered from that beautiful Hobbit double. Watching it in the replay, you just thought that's like round ending. Oh, they are hiding from Nafni's pre-aim. It's one of those things you want to do it when there's a tell. If you just stay with your head up the entire time, we've seen how easy it is. Like I think Furious showed good examples of how simple it is to clear these kind of angles. You're sticking out your little cap and they can see you before you even get a chance to shoot back. That spreads. Yep. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it's okay. They can stay in this. Yeah, but it does imply that there could be a boost. Baiting the sound. Grimbo is not falling for these wicked games. Spotted. Escaping. Jeez, what is that made of? Yeah. I'm a bloody car right there. Adamantium. So many nades coming their way. Busted and bruised a Tizian and Crimbo. You want to see a push from Faven, right? Like, he's the poor guy, right? His stats don't replicate the game. Well, don't speak of the game he's been having. All he's done this game is rotate A. That's all he's done, yeah, this right. poor guy. Oh, he's gone for the angle. Not this again. We're here again. This is how it started. This is how Crimbo's C uh, CT adventure started. Tizian just caught off. Oh, God, he could have it. He's just got to make sure he peeks more proactively. Wait for it. Wait for it. And Crimbo. They run boost. Perfect chance to strike. Axal immediately trades. Tabson's let it slip. And we look to be going to a second OT. It's only nine seconds. Maybe Searson could win by virtue of the clock. He's not going to hit that wall bang. And Axar's not going to let him get away. We go again. Just like that. Slate wipe clean. Not a second to think about it. You go straight back in as we reset. Still looking for an answer as to who shall take Vertigo. This time, however, players starting where they were just were. Wow, they'll be bringing the attack first. Love to hear what Yanko and Kassar think of that position. Krimbo's used twice. My statistical analysis is it's 100% um, of the time not worked. It, it's just, anyway, it doesn't matter. 18-18. Yep, we'll come back to it. I'll let the analysts lose their mind over that. I'll just lose my mind over the action as we uh, surely at some point see something a little bit different, right, players? Or alternatively big, you take a risk. You push mid, you push B, you take some space. You make them feel flustered because right now they're able to execute A without any qualms whatsoever. Ah, yes, of course. The Hobbit uh, hole, I believe they call that spot. What is he doing here? Is this him you being... You can't shoot my headshot. Is that, that him being anti-flash or something? I don't know, maybe <laughs> he was just having be. a chat. No, but legit. Can't maybe. get flashed if I can't see the flash. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, well, up we go again. Oh, man, I've seen this before, you know. I reckon I might have seen this about 30 rounds, so... It's a bit of a rerun here, right, isn't it? <laughs> They're running, really recycling the TV. Oh, Searson has just pipped a perfect gap. That I don't know how much is that just perception, but he's nailed it. They, well, this is the remastered edition. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Remastered, they released director's DVD. Cut, director's yeah, well, the director's cut is... We're already in the director's cut. <laughs> True. 18, 18, and we start our MR3, 12, 5. So you do... Something different. See something different. They're going B. Faven, salivating. He has to get a kill here, surely. All he's done is jiggle. All he's done is this and then go A. Uh, now he gets uh. to do this and stay. I love the run boost that lands on the box. I know we're not getting it now. As I think they're coming B. Yeah, it feels different, feels weird, feels good for Faven. Double, maybe even a triple because Inters has not got any hope here. Big Clan successfully deal with a very flaccid first round out of the players. Okay, well, you know, keep trying the same thing over and over again, and it finally pays off for Faven. So, lucky boy, gets a bit of action, doesn't just have to rotate. And realistically, that's one of the things where, where stats don't always tell the whole story of a game, right? You need the context of, oh, which bombs I have to be hitting time and time again. And going in and retaking a site when you're in a number disadvantage, that always sucks. That's never a fun position to find yourself in. So uh, make sure you add that one to your little HLTV forum comments, guys. Here we go again. 
magic number this time is 22 as Axal has been quickly forced on back. Smoke does the same to Sirison, so the Smoke and Mirrors game continues, and that's a nice little scuttle on down. Afeni's taken a chunk of damage there, bullets and nade. Tizian to be tested middle. They could boost. Hobbit implying he wants something. Staring at his teammate. But they are going for a mid to B split. This is different again. They can leave Searson over towards the scaff position and rotate a 2 2 defense here. Crimbo flashed in. Oh, but Hobbit was anti. Deliberate or not. It's a lot of pressure now. Favor, can you deliver? The answer's no. Axel Crosser in the perfect place. Tizian trying to be the hero. And what Whoa. a shot! He snaps into Shiro. Keeps us in a competitive environment. This is huge from Hobbit, though. This is the rotation. It's completely locked off here. Missed his shot, did he? No, Hobbit's low. 4 HP, they're both low. You could use a USP, but Tamsin's going to have so much to deal with here. If he can just be in the blind spot, maybe he can isolate Nafani. Oh, hello. I mean, spotted. Yeah, he gets it. And now, with a deep flash, he could progress a little deeper towards those B stairs. He's got all these nades. He's just picking them all up. Intus is going to burn if he's not careful. It will spread. Responds, gets the frag. They need to defuse, though. They need to defuse as soon as the flames fade. Searson down. Tamsin holding. Hobbit's going to run him down in time. Oh, wow. Oh. What a way to finish. Hobbit three. <laughs> Everyone down and out in that round. That grenade from Tamsin onto Inters <laughs> was perfect. Yep. It did so much damage. He got 12 HP. The molly forces him forward. I mean, that was such a unique counter-strike round. I, I almost wanted to want to watch it again in slow-mo. But yeah, how did Hobbit not get flashed was my first question. I didn't really get, to get answers in the replay there. Oh, like record-breaking tweets. Ah, look, it's utility that wins this round, like almost completely there, isn't it? Yeah. Because that molly is what made so Tabza couldn't sit the defuse. Otherwise, he could have just stuck up. Here we go. Who's going to walk away with the round lead at half? Hooey. Something's got to give, right? Yeah, right. Boy, Tabson has 693 utility damage and Inters has 800. It sounded like you said 800. 800. Wow. 802 to be precise. Damn. I mean, I think anything close to 1,000 is usually the sign that you've had a crazy game. 800 in utility damage. Four of them gathered here on ramp, so much more back to the standard playbook. Wow. Okay, Searson. Well rehearsed on his clears, catches Hobbit poking his head out of his front door. They've just used some utility here, so they need to do something with that. I know that you heard the extinguish, but uh, those nades to try and facilitate a bit more of an aggressive stance. Searson up, at least he's facing from this position. Might catch one off guard. Oh no. Axile does go down, but Shiro catching Krimbo, and that's so perfect. Tizian just doing the dance. A double flashbang in the face of players and it's cleaned up 20 to 19 two ct rounds secured so the bar set for big clan not only does inters have 805 utility damage now he has 29 effective flashes and for tabs he has 34 so uh the, they're doing a lot of utility work these two and uh, they're, they're both towards well i would say the top of the score but we are in ot both both players have a lot of frags here 26 for inters 34 for tabson on the other side is axel with 32 he's cooled off a little bit here we go. Look at that flash. Just two of them with their hand above the face. Round lost on the back of a single $200 grenade played to perfection. Number 22. If we go 21-21, we go again, and we'll have an ab break first before we get into OT number three. So keep your eyes tuned or peeled. I hate the idea of peeling my eyes, to be honest. Last time CSM was firing off shots through the A ram smoke, they, they all in B. And last time they did this boost, it didn't work very well, oh, but there was crap. two at B. Hold your nerve. So they've cleared close with those nades. Now he's up. He can scout quickly here. Yeah, off the flash, surely. Axel fired off some shots. You know he's going to be close, but he does find his time. 
I don't know if Axile is aware that Faven's so close, but they're leaving him to lurk. They're not actually this using is, this to execute. This is like parking a player in Connector or Mirage and then hitting B. I guess the thing is, maybe if Faven his footsteps, then he can go into the site and kill one in the back, but they need to pressure A, and time is the biggest issue. 35. Oh, wait. If Axile goes any further, he could be susceptible. But they've got the least... Too late. I feel like they have to go A. Yeah, they're going now. Shira's got a smoke for that. Boys, where are you going? 20 seconds. Now Faven's got one of the two. There's another player there. If they go back, Axel's still here. Applies. Axel's there. Faven doesn't quite Round's finish over. the job, and this is a weird one. Round's over. 13 seconds, Big Clan. You've got to find a way in, and that's something, but the denial is still so imminent. You could just deny it. There it is. Yeah, Chad's not wrong. What an ugly state of affairs for Big Clan there. You, yeah. you, is it easy to think to, to second guess yourself when it feels too easy to get into the site or too obvious? Uh, I, I think the thing is, the, the thing that really stumbled across them there was that late sandbag smoke that was thrown because it stalled them out. It was like, hold up, well, he's here. We don't have enough time to clear him. It's probably better if we just go B and Faven got that kill. Uh, but yeah, like it, 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 and it was Inters as the first frag. So I guess that makes him feel that maybe they were doing the setup where Axel was mid. We've already yeah. seen that. So it, it's not the worst of times, but it was a, a good play by players not to over rotate. And his players again, Naphne onto Tapson. In game leader on in game leader action. It feels like players now, this, that's the breakthrough they're looking yeah. for, right? Yeah, opening kill from Naphne in the feed, and it's on to Tapson. I mean, he lives and dies by that opening maneuver. He's died 33 times. You know, there's testament to his commitment to the cause. Wow, into his long range, spots out the boost all the way from CT. And so time to regroup, retool, and try and apply some sort of overcoming of the numbers disadvantage. I think we're going to see a repeat of the last round because Shiro and Nafani are still in these forward positions. Shiro's over towards Sandbag, Nafani continuing to jiggle from top of Crane and Ramp, and if they go B, it's the one-bird combo of Inter's Axar with Hobbit ready to chip in. So I would quite comfortably call this 21 for players before even seeing the last 50 seconds of play here. They'd have to miss some shots. Yeah. You can see the reactionary view. Like four smokes, dude. what he was waiting for, and Axile does immediately knock Faven on the floor. One through the smokes, not much to celebrate. Inters is still on default. Inters is gone from default, tissing and catching him with the spray, but with 25 seconds Five left. Five bullets. Five bullets in that new weapon. And the bomb now down, but it's only Sears, and he hits it just as the flash pops. Oh, he didn't catch a glimpse of him. He actually wormed into the smoke. Now he knows. And they do too. Elevated angle, he has to hit this first shot. No flash, and oh, oh. he quick switched. It's not planted for him. It's not planted for him. It's not planted for him. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. The knives are coming out there. The no scope's not hidden, the knife does, but goes the other way. Shiro will pick that one up, and now players just one round away. I think this is the first time they've actually been in this position, right? I think Big have had two opportunities. Yeah, so uh, if I've been keeping track correctly, which I probably haven't, this is players' first opportunity to really close out the match here. Great first shot out of Sis, and I think the sobering reality once they got across that default and the nice loud celebration, Harosh from Nafani. Can they close it right here, right now? This has been a long first map of this series, and testament to how much is at stake. Big and players, both teams with that one win, one loss, Axile. They heard that. Oh, he heard that. See that, yeah, careful. Your toes in your head, exposed. Favors not having fun against Axile. Just a contrast in experience. If you're gonna be... Oh, there's oh. another one back. Whoa, it's all falling apart, it's all over. And, uh... Oh, they've fallen over their shoelaces, Chad. They've got jam all over the face. Ooh, it's been a long game. It's, it's such been a, a hard game, fought game. But, but to lose it like this. Yep, not the way you wanted it to go down. Tizian can try and change things. It's great to take Shiro out of the equation. It's better to catch the rotation of Inters. Nafani, however, is here to win the round, and I don't think Crimbo is going to be ready for this. Oh, hasn't been cleared. Yeah, that's nice, actually. Oh, Tizian. T Tizian not clearing his corners, and so all resting on the rookie in a 1v4. Well, Axel thought it was clear because Nafani just was down there, right? So, Crimbo, here it is. Three more to find now. What do you got, young gun? He's got a smoke. 
And he's been spotted. Great catch, ducks under the shot. Nice. Shaping up of a 1v4, taking the first two. He knows they're going to be close. He'd love a plan, and that smoke should facilitate. Nate can finish, and it does. Nasty way to go. A nice try, but there you go. Players will take the map. Vertigo was Big Clan's pick. And we do see it conclude in a double overtime affair. Big Clan will have to reset, retool, and get back on for Ancient. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you are too. Grab a snack, grab a drink. We'll be right back with your second map after some analysis. What up, future pros? I have a nifty fast A smoke I saw Apex throw to help you on your pistol A rushes. You throw this smoke from the T spawn and it will block off the left side of the A side, allowing your teammates to run up short with a bit of smoke coverage. To throw the smoke, first shoot out the glass above. Really, this is the only one you need to break. But shoot them all anyway. Then get yourself stuck into this invisible corner next to this beam. Aim between these two dots as shown and jump out the smoke. This smoke will soar through the sky and land perfectly to block off the vision Heku. of short we are getting from the ourselves side into nice and two. You and Heku are not friends. Why? She didn't call you by your first name. What did she call me? Shane. Oh. Well, I call her Heku. That's true. I don't you call, call her, her Heku first name as well. Yeah, You're not okay. calling her Anna. Oh, damn. Anastasia. Ah, right. oh, that's true. Okay, I, I kind of fell into that one, yep. didn't I? You did a foot in your mouth and a smoke in the red room. You see what I did there? I pulled us back in. Well, the one expert odds are going to pull us even deeper oh. into players being the favourites in this one. And who would have thunk it as Shiro with his patented P250 splash? It was nice hearing from the uh, the boys on the desk, Kassad framing it as well. They said we get the T start straight away. Uh, we had it, of course, on the first map, but now we get to see players who only managed to accrue six rounds up against the Movistar Riders starting on this T side. Sisson takes a gamble on that reposition. No info, Donut. And now info a plenty. They're coming in, and he is being warded off. Commitment to eight. Not yet confirmed, and it's going to be a click exchange. Hobbit gone, but not forgotten. Searson hanging out in the temple. You can see the restraint on this Axile A Hall's lurk. Oh, it's fully rotated right now for Big. Searson's continuing to biff. Yeah, and eventually it leads to a frag. Tamsin's the one to pull the trigger eventually. Now, now he's poking and prodding Cave for a late rotate finish. It's a race. And I'd hazard a guess that it's Crimbo on Navani to get this information. He's once again been set up for success with the Jewelies and... Pistols akimbo. Yeah, hey. Crimbo with pistols akimbo. And frags to come through for Navani. Wow, great catch. Tizzy and low HP makes it at least even. Flash. Bit too deep. Tabson's flank here, yeah, yeah, this is it. This is what it's all going to come down to right now. Searson wants to keep their attention drawn. He can't afford to go down, and he oh. does. Inter's quick adjustment, and now very awkward fights for Tabson. They'll know he's likely rampant. He's hit the first, which makes it very awkward here for Shiro. Tabson, you're not brave enough to go for the full 10 seconds to Shiro, 3k and secures the pistol for the boys. It couldn't got any closer. One-on-one, -on -one, both sites, fights all over, even trades. It is the closest a pistol gets. Yeah, beautiful stuff there from Naphne as well, right? Just to take back that cave space and then for him to collapse on out. This one here, it's a dicey move right there from Inters, but it's a good call to make. Sirison can't possibly looking in both directions at once. And then the P250, yeah. The bullet perfect straight between the eyes. And now it's going to be five USPs and a HE towards middle quite How many quickly. does Hobbit get? Two. Oh, they have really kept them humble. Unless 
they were ready for Axile. We, uh, we misallocated. It was Axile that was actually going to farm up and get himself a little bit of a confidence boosting three piece. It's a good eco. That's Very. actually a really good eco, Very to be nice. fair. The fact you're getting uh, two kills out of that is tidy, tidy. And the reinvestment's coming in for players, but the investments for big coming out as well. Now, Sirison in these rounds tends to operate with a scout in instead of uh, an AWP that's going to afford it. But on Ancient, he's actually operating with an M4. So uh, this is curious to see. And with this setup right now, Faven is going to be the A anchor. So uh, he didn't have a lot of action over there on Vertigo, being the B anchor. Let's see how much action he gets being the A anchor on Ancient. Probably not a lot, I yeah, imagine. He has to do the jobs. He He's given just definitely um, much more of an inactive start part of the map. Well, they are coming to his direction right now with the bomb, and, and Sirison is a bit of a sleeper, right? He's hiding behind the tall box, so uh, it might be a, 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 a pounce here with some mid lurk from Inters. Yeah, and the role he has to play here, Favorite has to act like CT solo A. He has to look like and react as if he was alone. Ah. Oh, looks like he was alone. He sold it. Guys, we're going in. <laughs> Atizian draws attention. Searson should have a 3k. He could have a double at least. It's the mop and bucket, aisle 12. Oh, I don't like it. Now he's just I'm baited nervous. away, Tizian. I'm nervous. Uh, uh, awkward. Gets it. They're already through Temple. Grimbo may not check his corner. Ooh. Oh, thank God. Searson has at least done his due diligence and forces them off the A site. Now, the bomb is a loss. The CTs have control, and it's just a question of caging this CT push. Look at the angle Grimbo's opted for. It's less lethal, but it will be information safely. <laughs> Shiro's uh, already come through main once this round. He's going to try it a second time. Oh, very lethal. Never mind. Grimbo's handled business. Shiro decides he might go for another clutch. Now, he's already had one in the 1v1. Double kill to his Where name. Where's he and, going? Where um, you going, Shiro? I'm not sure what his plans are here. Where you going, mate? He hoping to arrive CT with five seconds to spare. Yeah, look, he's he's going to have to keep the W key held. He, he can't be doing too much of the shifty boy business here. He's only he's got... Shifty boying. Yeah, 17 seconds now, Yo, Shiro. Bro, and it's just... He's doing the, I'm making it look like I'm going for it, but really I'm saving. Everyone's favorite. Him and Jame, they have a special club for this one. Yeah, there is a unique club. But for a second there, we thought he was going for a round the world maneuver. It's not worked out. And Big Clan take the round. And Good damage. he gets another one. Oh, having a pop and a squat there. You can see the corpses of the, uh, well, the player that Sirison let through, I believe it was Hobbit, does shut him down eventually. We can see this. I mean, there was a lot of opportunities for him to strike. And the way Sirison handled it in the end, it worked out into a round. It was like round winning. Take down Naphne. And it was the second frag, this one here. Necessary. Uh, could have got really awkward for Krimbo. Yeah, silenced M4. You're not quite sure where those bullets are coming through. But a lot of damage done there, as we mentioned. So it's two MP9s and a Famous to meet the M4s that are, well, remaining for big here. The other buy for players is pretty broken too. A Deagle, a couple of Galils. So neither team in the optimal situation here. But uh, B lane control being quite heavily contested. You can see the smokes littering that right now. Top left hand side of your screen on the radar. CT and T smokes. There's a cave smoke throwing mid smokes as well. So now as it starts to subside, I just want to know who's going to be the Mopos for big. Mm. I assume Tabson. Yeah, I mean, I just love watching uh, Hobbit exploit the responsibilities of that CT in mid. He'll make them keep, he'll keep them guessing consistently. Now, this isn't the best round to talk about it, given that they are regrouping and just going for a late pop out of the B long. See, Krimbo on the jiggle, he has a smoke in his hand, right? So as soon as he takes any contact, he can drop this smoke and then play behind it. And if players execute without clearing this... Oh, there you go. Lucky they cleared it. They're coming through. Oh, he's so ahead of it. He is so ahead. And now in trouble. Nice catch. MP9 delivers. Taps and Nade oh, as through well. Through the boards. Two through kills. Through the boards. Axel has at least leveled it up. But they don't have space. Sure, you've killed them. Rotates through. Unconfirmed now as to how they have to position. I can't believe you just got both kills through the boards right there. You can see the X's on the map as they lined on up to that 35 bullets spam straight through the paper thin wood. Good to have it bangable. Thanks, Volvo. 28 as they return to B. They still have two smokes. They can smoke long and short here and just execute into the site, but they're opting to go contact through cave. So they can throw an easy one once you get into cave just here. Just pop it in, cover off short. But no, slow as you like. It is just this and now. Whole team, loud. Axile down. They have to disrupt the plant or keep the Hobbit bodyguard down, and they can't do either. A 2v2 established. Faven to try and play retake. Util dumped. Hobbit is now dead, and Faven's not doing well. Nice run down. Tizian saves the big clan boys from a red face there, and it will be a loud celebration. I think they really do want to try and get under player's skin. I think the mental game is one that... 
Big Clan are going to have to try and exploit as well. Ancient, this is player's pick for a reason. Very threatening with Axel through the boards, but big force them to swallow their pride. Yeah, this is the double kill I was talking about there. You can see on the X-ray them lining Ooh. up, so it's fortunate to get that here. Uh, curious to not use the smokes. Right? Uh, uh, contact in, yeah, okay, you want to catch them off guard. Hope that that lulls them into a rotation or whatnot, but you didn't have the smokes down. They were happy to push on through, and, and that's one of the keys to success here for big. So down to the pistols for players. Julie's for Nafani, P250 for Inters, Deagle for Hobbit, Shiro saving for an AWP will just find himself on a Glock, and Axar has a Tech 9. So you get a true smattering of all the different pistols that you can purchase right here. I think quite literally, actually. The only one we're missing is the CZ, right? So a bit of everything. Ah, lovely. Tizian gets to put on his straw hat. And Searson does as well. $1,200 injected very quickly into his bank account. And Axel, um, yeah, his his fun and games never really got started. He was responsible to cage any A aggressions and now finds himself at spawn with the bomb and zero territory. We can assume that this one will peter out into uh, a Tech-9 walk to A? If he just chills around here and starts to account for Sirison's push, he could find himself a free gun, right? So if I was going to start to... And I know it's only an MP9, but it's, it's still a gun. It's just the thing is he'd have to account for this and the T-spawn push from B, not... Too simplest. common. Yeah. And Sirison's not a knifey boy, is he? I don't think Sirison will even clear this angle. Oh, there you go. He will. He's a, he's a knifer. Win. 1,500. That's a very, very good round for the AWPer. Not only does he come in with $7,500, but he farms himself up a lovely haul there over the course of two SMG frags and a knife. Well, we'll see both teams get out the AWP now. You can watch this eco bash here, Tizzy and thrust forward. This is the two MP9 kills you were talking about here under pressure, but the flash, that was good. And the timeout called. This time it's going to be from Groove. Just wants to have a little bit of a chat with the players before they go into this gun round. Enough for uh, Nafid in Inters to buy, don't you worry about that. But just making sure they talk through all their options here. Now, bigger yet to play an Ancient with Krimbo. They've played it with Keto. Um, I think I was having a look at it like four times. And uh, there was, uh, in the, well, the last four times they played it, they only won it once. Let's put it that way. That's probably a little bit safer to, to play my words that way. So a 25% win rate, what you saw, uh, but none of that is with Krimbo. So we're going to see what he can bring to the table right here. And we know that this map has a CT side bias. So we're looking for uh, at least nine rounds for that of Big on their CT side. It was enough for Movistar Riders to get it done. Let's see if it's enough for the Germans. Close mid smoke, so not opting for the deep, and Tizian putting some bullets through. He'll limp the molly behind that. The thing is that molly will subside, and Hobbit can even play behind that smoke and link up with Inter Series. They're trying their luck towards A again. Now they have a little bit of mid pressure. They have a bit of B lane pressure, and now they can start working on this A execute. This is what you want to do if you're going to work A, is make sure you're pressuring the other key points of the map here and keeping the information barren, which they've done a great job of. But is it a lurk? Is it an execute? Looks like they're just going to poke their head in here. Haven's got caught out once. Can he find it on the angle again? They crouch under the peak. He's being swung on. Very scary times. Good bodyguarding from Tizian. Two out of Donut. Posted up. The Orba looking for oh. the glorious peak. Damn, Shiro tracks him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a Ferrari swing. Cut down Orba's quick. Got here. Yeah, and there is a lot to be discussed here. Shiro oh, knows oh, he's oh, susceptible. Oh, oh. oh Ready for that? Shiro is switched on. And Hobbit catches Tabson. This is all players, the individuals taking and punishing. Sis and here's Inters. And misses his quick scope. Won't make the same mistake twice. Back to A they go. Surely. Wow, Shiro, he just got the message. He just got the memo. They're, uh, they're bouncing between both points here. Hobbit actually decided to go donut instead straight towards Red House, which means that Sirison's actually been able to get past. He can contend against this one on two. Everything that Shiro did could be for naught. Shiro's just going to have to pivot now. Bomb through Donut. Time is of the essence. Oh, but gets the info. 15 seconds, Shiro going through mid. Sh Searson switched on. Both Here of them so this. alert. So alert. The smoke complies. He's going for the full commit. And damage so high. Eight seconds. What are you going to do, Shiro? He's not got time. Searson has won the round. This, what? This is so peculiar. Everything Shiro did for nothing. And Searson just outbrains the bunch. Whoa, okay, okay. So, oh. uh, yeah, look, a Hobbit, he went to Donut to secure A, but really, in that situation, he should have gone to Red House to secure the rotation. 
I think Krimbo must have been heard from Inters, right? I think Inters, the guy you see dying here, when he was up on B lane, may have heard Krimbo pushing spawn, because I don't know how Shiro was ready for that. You know, Searson gets this frag, heads to mid, and as soon as he hears those steps, it's just like euphoria. He just knows he's got to slow and take the fight. Talking to taking the fight. Look at this orb. Flashed off. Krimbo can end the round right here. Sh Shiro, dead man. Bodies dropping. Krimbo, the master of three. And just repels the invaders. No one left but Axel. And gone. Just like that. As quickly as they came, they leave. So it was like a tilt type round into a clean sweep. So that is great for Big. Like mentally, they just had a really good pickup. And then as far as the economy and building a bank balance is concerned, it's even better. Uh, another timeout called here from Groove. You can see he's just chilling. He's got his legs crossed. He's got his pen. He's got his paper. He's just going to try and run him through what the options are. Shiro, through virtue of saving, has a little bit less cash than everybody. So we'll see if he operates with a Galil or maybe a pistol. But they can buy. They can get the rifles out. They can get the Util behind it here. And the double orps are equipped right now for Big. I, I think they're aware they're getting a bit of mid space because what Tizian's throwing is that well, it's more shallow from the CT side, right? It's it's he's actually in the cusp of mid. It's not in the deep elbow yeah. part. So if he keeps doing that, I wouldn't be too worried about scrimming through. If I was players with enough suppressing flashes, I, I think it would be something I'd be relatively confident in, in trying. Ah, they're not going for that this time. Donut Infinity Molly and Top Red House Smoke, the standard stuff. Tapson's feeling himself here. He just goes for the fight, and it leads to Nafani's demise. Another double in the feed for Big Clan. That was way too simple, wasn't it? Just two duels. He just got two complete fights there, and now it's Sirius's turn. He doesn't miss these. Yeah, he's never going to miss those. He gets to jump for the info and peek on the, his own discretion. They're walking in. Just a bit shy of the flash, and now he is in trouble. He will be burnt out, smoke to respond, and oh, Tizian's death does surely seal the deal. They know they've got him cooked, cornered. Shiro doesn't want to lose the bomb in an overcommitment, but he is taking it ledge. Searson's not ready for this. Hobbit deals with it. And so a competitive approach, 2v4 becomes 2v3. Grimbo's done this before. We just highlighted it earlier where Shiro caught him off guard, and he's going for it again. And the cool thing here is players like to play these mid rounds, right, where they will rotate back through quite frequently. So the, the good thing is, for Krimbo, if it was a B play, he would own them. The issue is, it's not a B play whatsoever. Shiro in Red House, Hobbit applying some pressure now out through A main. He's flashed forward, he's made some shots, and that, oh, that faded Tapson in, who's found another. Can't believe Tapson wins that duel. Shiro, wow. Shiro gets all the info and the element of surprise, and NK, I definitely think this is part of his game plan. I know I'm on, casters like to give you way too much credit when you, it's not sure. always due, but I'm just saying, I think he's he's well aware, you know, that the players are are fragile right now. Uh, they were unsatisfied with their performance. They picked up a surprising loss yesterday, and he knows that this is the same map that they were probably analyzing and frustrated on previously. We had three players absent yesterday on this map, and now you're back. You're starting to pick up pace. You want them to hear how much you're enjoying it. Yeah, that's true. The Movistar Riders were loud as well, right? Uh, I think that's just more nature of how they tend to celebrate, but it, yeah, it definitely big. pays in, right? <laughs> I don't so. think NK's had his voice this tuned in in their previous affairs. Maybe he knows that this could be just that little extra to get them across the line. Now, Faven, this is a lovely angle to take. It does, It's good for information. It's good for a good early frag. That is if Tizian is safe to hold a halls. Now with the setup with the buy, he shouldn't have too many issues other than him being run down by a pace change. It is Inter's flash, which could give them a go, but I don't know how he flashes from this position to, to permeate a spot like Faven sitting in here of Temple. So it's gonna have to be a jump across. Yeah. Well, they do bait the shot, and Tizian's only got one. This could go wrong. This is going wrong. He's only got a USP, and he's being run down. Now, another one down. Searson's at least kept it level. That's a bit of an oopsie from Shiro. He's walked straight back into the scope. Searson's giving free realm, or free roam, rather, to find the frags. Now, he's not got any hope, his Hobbit. He's cleared B. And tension drawn to that rotate. Tapson's got this one locked. Yeah. He's not even doubting himself here, just hiding and using uh, the jut of the wall here to give himself a bit of an orky angle for Hobbit to clear. 
And there you have it. Nice shot there from Tabson, continuing to do some work. But Sirison, I think, is the key right now. 12 kills for him, right? If this AWP continues to find a lot of impact here on Ancient, right? There's a lot of long corridors where it's good, right? Obviously, you can see him when he gets out towards middle or you sort of even orping in towards donor. You can go aggressive A main with it. If you really want, you can start doing run boosts. You can start doing the run boost and get him over towards ledge and heaven, peeking down towards the B lane. You can play passive over towards B. So if he's feeling it and he's flowing with it, Alex, this is uh, the third timeout already from players. That's three timeouts in nine rounds of play, and we're about to go into round number 10. Yeah, Ancient at the moment feeling a little bit like the start of Vertigo, but we know how that managed to uh, boil on out. Admittedly, Big Clan gave them a way back in. Couple of unforced errors on their part. Gave players the confidence in the individuals online. Shiro definitely has showed up. We saw him close out that pistol and continue to be a threat with an 11 to 6. His scoreline embodies that. But at the moment, absence from Nafani, absence from Hobbit. In a few tricks here, right, to, yeah. to try and activate that of uh, Nafani. We know that Hobbit can work out mid when he is given the room and the space to do so. I do think it's interesting. Yes, the Hobbit's lurky smoke that I've been such a sucker for because it does neutralize red room holds. Tizian's counter is so simple. He just negated it completely. Throws a smoke on top of it. Yeah. All right. Well, you can have that. I'll just have a better it. one. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Like, look, look what it does to Hobbit. He has to either go through and start clearing from scratch. And that means that the B players, during all of this while they're taking B lane, don't know if a player has jumped up heaven and wants to take that fight, right? So it's messing their default up. Yeah, they're going to have to adjust this, and and that's going to be up to Hobbit to vocalize. Now, I don't know if they already have. Uh, it looks like now they've completely left B lane, so they're aware of how susceptible they are to that type of a play. Uh, that's going to put all their eggs in this basket of mid. Now, they do have the number advantage here. It's a late mid take now, so... Cut out Molly, Red House Smoke, but it's still double orbs, right? So Faven or Sirison can find one and then poke away quite quickly here. 49 seconds on the clock, so we've already whittled through more than half the time of this round. Yeah, and they've got nothing to celebrate but mid control. If they go A late, like Tizian's position, he should be good to stall out Axile, and then he's going to be in an awkward position to clear because as you enter A from Donut, you have to worry about A main, as Temple, well. and CT. Yeah. Really brutal. They really are light on time here. I, I, I feel like players... Clock has been another enemy, like the sixth man that's been besting them here. 20 seconds, lads. Faven's going to be on the way. It is only two players to defend, but Tizian can disrupt. He can just stay here. He doesn't even uh -oh. need peek. Uh-oh. Oh. He's gone. And that should be a player's recovery. Yeah, they're already cowering for a save of the double orb. And well handled. There was a couple of ways that could have gone wrong. The opening pick, though, completely converted. Yeah, that's the M4, not best in the AK right there. You get the dink, but not the kill onto Axile. That that could have been the frag, and everything would have changed in that one. So they will grab their third, and, and there's the adjustment, right? They just don't want to play B lane. They just don't want to play B lane at all. We're, we're happy to, to go late through middle here. We know that if you use a lot of utility mid and B lane early, eventually when that subsides, you have to kind of sit on your haunches. And this was a good opening here from Shiro onto Tabson. We saw him win an easy fight from there before, so going for that same trick hasn't paid off twice. And you can see how that could have spiraled, right, Dink? The who's there, an AWP. AWP misses his first shot. Suddenly it's a double and you're in main main, stopping all of that funny business. It's uh, the smallest margins. We will see, though, that the round concludes. Third now on the board and a necessary one for players if they want to post a competitive half here. It was a seven-round run from Big Clan. That's nice. That is very nice. It, it's given them a bit of a buffer as far as the cash is concerned, too. So with the saves, they get another full buyout now. And, and next round, with the loss bonus, there isn't going to be sitting at 1,900. They should be close enough to get something at, at least threatening. But the thing with Big is they tend to take the more conservative approach. So we will wait and see. It depends on the saves, too. But a lot of responsibility given to Tizian here in mid. Like, he's had help a couple of times, right? But more often than not, it's just him. So he has been tasked with an awful lot here just to control this one area of the map. And sure, it allows them to bolster B. Sure, it allows Sirius to float around the map a little bit more so early. There's some teams you see who start three middle, and then you rotate one donut to A, you keep two aggressive mid, so... Oh. Hmm. Tabson. Very much determined to maintain mid control. Let's Tizian soft rotate by dropping out of cave into mid. This is an adjustment, right? Yeah. If they played two in donut, or if they played a sleeper in donut here of Tabson, could kind of foil their plans. It's a really cool adjustment because it looks like players are going straight back to the same play. They want to fake it out, flash out. 
Smoke is the same feeling, but with a different setup. Tizian trying to tap a couple of heads on the cross. No traces with the silence there enables him to take those more ambitious attempts. Nafani's pathing is everything, and he is heading towards Dona. I was going to say, he could jump up Tetris over towards B, but it's the, it's the same play, almost. Yeah, it is, and taps in my go. Off. Tizian actually wins out the duel in middle. They're not going to be ready for this now. Oh, they have completely not checked him. And the double. It's the freest double Tapson's collected. Bomb lost. Likely the round unless Inter's feeling like the hero. Posts his fourth frag, but walks into the scope of Faven. And with 18 seconds left, bomb to be retrieved. Axile's hopes and dreams fading. He's locked in. Sirison's over towards T-Spawn already at the totem. So this one's done. Yeah. Thing is, if he goes down after time, that is the worst case. Five, four, three... To... Well, he'll survive, and he even gets a kill. So, could have been uh, catastrophic right there, but turns out okay and can't get to the AWP quick enough. But uh, an immediate response back. So, that seven in a trot, there's a hiccup, there's a there's a speed bump, but we're, we're back in cruise control And how much now. would you credit that to, to Tabson's mid-round adjustment? It was a great little adjustment, wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, the fact that they did try to run almost exactly the same play again, uh, big, they're not going to fall, fall, fall for it twice. As uh, double AWPs, really part of Big's game plan here. They continue to run it. And I think what one of the reasons that's been working for them Look at Searson right is now. that Searson was typically leaning towards B. Okay, Searson, that's really ambitious. I think he just been spotted, but that doesn't stop him pulling the Very trigger naughty. onto Axel. That's going to really annoy him. And he's allowed to get away. I think he's through. He's called his bluff. Uh, you won't be expecting this. No, They've just no. disrespected the smoke Both completely. Faven will be posted up to at least acknowledge it, but if they do just pick up the pace, Faven's got to do a lot here, and they've been really nice with their flight pass. They can boost as well. Oh, he's going to go from nothing to everything. They can jump, bait the shot, pull the crosshair. Right. Oh, oh, gets it with the flashbang out, ready for the or baits the shot, and now it goes down. Nafani has access to the sight bomb on the back of Shiro. Tabson through Temple has just missed Nafani's cross. Good timing, though. He should be able to stall out this plant. Most likely. Oh, yeah, Nafni did not consider the reposition into Temple. A counter flash is good. Tabson's a threat. Baiting more shots. Shiro still in the chaos of it all. Providing the necessary first. There's more required and Searson's too quick. Nine already in the bank account for the defense. Big Clan, they've come here to play today. And if they can close this out cleanly... Players have got such a high bar that's been set by the defensive adversary. This gets scary. And we have Mirage as the third map. So uh, going to be interesting to see how this one all shapes up on Mirage. I, look, I, I have players as my, my favorite to pick up that map. But uh, all in all, right now, this is letting a, a lot of air out of the balloon. Uh, we're losing a... Uh, is it making that sound? Yeah. yeah. At the moment, it is. And, and this is the thing, right? It is still quite the, the CT bias map. But... Players picked it, right? You'd be wanting to get a decent T hole. Lots more pressure applied to Cave, so through the flak damage and even more to follow. Yeah, I think six is usually a pretty damn good metric for a T side that had its successes. Oh, lovely, lovely find from Sears, and the utility implies Hobbit coming through. Sticks around just long enough to pull the trigger. And 12th death for Hobbit, usually a very consistent fragging presence, especially on Ancient. This looks very, very likely to be a B here. Nafani can smoke, they can molly, and then they can... Oh, Shiro, he's oh, been able to find one. Get that! Yeah, just parked up, catches it as it fades. Resmoke now from Crimbo. Well, Nafani could do the same trick. He could even wallbang him. Doesn't think he... He goes for it, actually, yeah. And that reveals Nafani, but draws attention away for Inters to take down the Orpa. From the ramp, Searson loses his head from the Galil. Big opening. Keep us in a competitive stead. That fourth round that players... Find compulsory. Faven's cut off the rotate just by parking himself in mids, just playing to contain, as Chan Virtual likes to put it. Likely to be, well, definitely going to be the B finish now that uh, Axel's coming through the cave position, but two of them, short and long, just poking those rifles forward here to take a fight on either angle. 20 seconds. They love running down this clock. It just makes me so nervous. 15, lads. Next jiggle is the fight. And Tizian says good night. You got a plan now. You got a plan now and you've lost all your teammates. You can't win the round, Axile. You get the first two, but just by virtue of the clock, we have another round on the board for the big clan boys. 
Yeah, this is looking very, very good for them now. If they can get 11, 11-4, 11 look, we know Zonix Law, but still, it's going to be a very, very good first half here for Big. And let's see what they have prepped for their T side. Might be able to uh, pull off a little bit of magic here against players who rough time of things at the moment. Galil's three, AK's two, Util light, and away we go. Round number 14 as three players head over towards B. Hobbit in mid and Axile, he's just going to be out to spawn. That's where he spent so much of his time yesterday against the Riders on the T-half, just throwing utility to try and facilitate his players. Here's Hobbit, he's having a peek, he's having a fight, and he's able to get the kill that he was looking for. Yeah, I mean, this does lead us into the pursuit of a fourth convincingly. It could still go wrong. Now, Bomb loose, scooped up, and on its way back through T-spawn. They want to just use their numbers, Chad. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the only thing they have to avoid here is not being noisy in A main. And if they do decide to go through Donut together, they should... Like, Faven's in a position, if they went through Donut, he could probably get two, but then he should be traded. Now that they're a bit more split up, it does come back to that sound cue I previously mentioned. So avoid that because it'll give enough time for Sirison to get there to potentially respond. Maybe not enough time to stop them from getting to Temple, but enough time to be ready to make sure they don't get all the way to CT. They've actually just called B lane clear. So here comes the rotation. Time, it could be the problem again for players. Oh, if Searson gambles and just leaves mid open, which is the right call, he can be there to at least support. Uh, smoked off, implies a commitment. Faven ready as well. And Searson trying his best to delay, but already so low, so low. He will go down to the spray. Just two more to find here. Yeah, Faven's there. It's up to Tabson to be an absolute madman. Only the first found, four secure. And it was a team ace. Every single member providing a nice frag from the players. Yeah, nice, good stuff right there. That uh, was handled right, and you could see where it was going to go wrong, but they accounted for the, well, only place that Sirius can find with that AWP. He's, he's had to take a risk as well because he doesn't want to allow them to fortify in the site. If he'd rotated through Temple, it would have been some angles that they were already close. Big box, maybe a couple of harder fights that he didn't want to have to take. But that one all comes down to the timing, and it felt like they had enough. But broken for the final round of play here. Pistols, MP9s. Could get fruity. Four. Could get fruity, especially with nades like that. Shiro, his aggression has been punished by a HE. And... Uh... Resmoking for an aggressive maneuver. Crimbo. He's progressing in. Is there a flashbang for them? This actually is a bit sketchy. Nafani's in the right position, baited by the toes, but still finds the opening. Doom falling through the smoke. And again, that double entry has been secured through aggression. Yeah, that's the difference maker, right? Two openers. That should be the round done and dusted here. It is just these cobbled together pistols. It's very, very rough here to defend against these players who are hitting the brakes again, right? And it hasn't worked for them in a lot of the situations, but now this is where it's more desperate for big. This is where they go, oh, well, we have to go for a play. We have to try and make a move. And as the seconds continue to sift through the hourglass, it's looking very likely like a 10-5. So it was a 9-6 yesterday, and then players still ended up losing. But I feel that this was going to be a little bit different on the CT side. It's not like it's been completely quiet from uh, everybody who was, was no-shows yesterday. At least Axel's here to play, right? Hobbit hasn't dropped almost 30 this time round, but uh, they've still been able to squeak through with... Oh. He is such a rascal. Deals with the problem. Searson gone, and it is just a question of time, Tabson, unless he's feeling invisible. He certainly is visible for Nafani, and issues resolved. What is your take on the skeleton knife? I like it. It's sexy, isn't it? Yeah. I think the vanilla one is probably the coolest. I wanted one, but I uh, opened that butterfly lore, so I think yeah. I'll, I'll stick with that. That's a fair that's a fair cop as well. And so is that. We'll call it a 10-5 half, as discussed. Big Clan, six rounds away from forcing Mirage. We'll get to see if this series will go the distance. Group C, this is a big game for both teams. Pun absolutely not intended. Players versus Big continues in just a moment.
don't need to go again. I don't comprehend and I do not pretend cause when I'm coming it's to win. back to see if Ancient is our last map of this best of three players after a double overtime affair just pulled Vertigo across the line and that was Big Clan's pick but nah, this is a big but I cannot lie I'm not talking about Virgil I'm talking about 10 rounds on the board for Big now they're coming into the T side if this pistol does get converted we could be looking at a very quick second half players unable to voice too many concerns and we catapult to Mirage or we go the distance one less round than they managed to accrue in the first half up against Mobistar Riders. Maybe players can do something different here on the CT side. A lot of the, the frag discrepancies of yesterday don't seem to be here in the same way. Yet. Yet. Yeah, this is where things uh, really turned into this year on Hobbit Show, right? The two of them just putting on a blistering individual performance. But here's the B exact. Happening at range. Yeah, it draws a crosshair. Good jump. Faven willing to take that first contact. He's trying to bait them into inters, but... Oh. That's why they put the P250 on Krimbo. He's getting a lot of extra pistol fun. Inters has made it interesting. Bomb now down already and ticking. Smoke from Inters Two here. Two cave side. Tizzy responsible for lane. This is going to be a Hobbit dance with Tizzy. Is Inters going to smoke? Oh, oh, oh. Hobbit needs to chill. He needs to let these rest of his teammates activate here, Alex. Yeah, he does. And that's coming in now. Axile, Shiro, Inters, all from short and long. They smoke off the ramp. Krimbo unable to contribute. Oh, Axile can't find the head. His teammates do. Two on two, there is a kit on Inters. They may not be ready for this. They have to push. If this click hits Tizian, it's done. Knocked off the bomb. Shiro, out of ammo. Out of ammo. Uh, it's a knife fight, and it's over. Big take the back, the T pistol by virtue of a quick plan. Okay, well, uh, that's changing pistols or, or swapping or trading pistols in this very map right here. But uh, yeah, that one was extremely awkward there towards the tail moments. That, that top ramp smoked sure, but there was three players who they had to deal with from Cave, and they just couldn't get enough done there on the way back in, players. They're going to go for a force buy. I see a UMP in the mix. I see Shiro dropping across an M4 to Nafani. So this is extremely desperate right now. You were talking about us getting catapulted uh, to a third map if things were picked up by Big Early. Well, this one will really send us there. Quick, smart. Faven's really quick. I love that. Just going to condition the CTs that they have to acknowledge and punish that gap in the donut cross because he's just going to walk through. Nutmeg, perhaps. Krimbo lining up for a donut smoke. So it's just Axile here right now. Ho Hobbit's leaning B. The other three of them are in B. So. I guess they're just gambling. Yeah, this is going to have to be all on to a very smoked off Axile in Temple. He can't do anything here. Ugh. He cannot do anything at all. Has to wait out this smoke. They're rotating in. Could still go wrong, could still go awry. And nice, nice problem solved, Axile. Like, aggressive. <laughs> You've got to try something. The uh, hop off the step one, two right there. They'll try and retain this M4, and uh, they should probably get the good graces of Big to be able to do so here. Is there anything for Shiro to, to like be excited about saving? I don't think he can scoop anything up, right? Because most of it is over, over towards a. that A site, so it's not going to get blown his direction. I, I think for him, it's just about applying a buffer for Nafani to hold on to this M4, because next round will just be this Deagle, the M4, the smoke, and the head armor. And uh, that's not going to go very far unless they can set Nafani up for success. You can see right there, Jay, the gun watcher, has found the Galil. A bit like a bird watcher. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the other day when there was a nade that blew off, blew off the AWP at the same time? 
I was speaking to Jerry about finding it, and apparently it was just the most ridiculous of like uh, combinations of consequences. Mm. The nade blowing as he died off the map. It's rare that we can't find those missing rifles, but uh, it does happen in our beautifully unique game. So as you discussed, Chad has already kind of set the the bar for our 18th round. Big Clan definitely are, you know, within touching distance of that Mirage and Big sending Tabson out for a lot of very confident space and steps. Same thing they did on Pistol here. The difference when you see Big doing that, th this smoke that there's right in front of these two right here that Shiro is going to boost over, they're throwing the smoke as well from spawn. So it's the Molly smoke combo, the Red House, and all the flashes. So you're a lot braver to run out, especially against a light by like this. We'll see what happens next round when the guns are out here. But it also helps that we discuss this with Hobbit taking that space to take the fight on Cave from two separate angles. It's not just going to be the expected B lane as you run up the ramp. And well, they've uh, gambled correctly here. So last round, they put 50 bucks on black. This time, they put 50 bucks on red. And uh, they've been able to outdo the stacks both times of players here. So Nafini not having any luck with these little gambles here. Yeah, I think he's seeing red at this point. Uh, Going to be a bit furious as the 13th comes in with only a USP defending your whole site. A bit late now to be considering that. Yeah, and here's the thing. As these rifles start to fortify the long side, they can peer around, they can fight, they can just stifle any rotation coming in. You can see players in a line. They're doing anti-flash and single f uh, ready for the fight. There is no flashes to be concerned about. And we are already witnessing a very, very broken players. Yeah, just getting repelled upon the first contact. The thing is, I think that uh, Big have also identified they just want a couple of exits here or to see if they overstep the mark. So they've all just started to actually backpedal. Tabson dealing with uh, T-Spawn now as well. So, so they're aware of what the play was. And as Tabson takes back this space, he's going, all right, guys, just come to me. We can save because we all have rifles, right? We, we don't need to give these away. We don't need to push anywhere on our own. Just come on back to the big man. I've told you where to be. I've told you where to stand. One will go off. Crimbo will survive, and uh, they, there you have it. They don't give anything over, right? So, so great work. It, it's important, right, to keep rounds like this, especially if it was a game where players wanted to mount a comeback. So really, really good stuff by Big here. First outing with Crimbo on Ancient, and it's looking like a lock. Yeah, I just, uh, I've got a lot of admiration for Crimbo, who, who's come into the, you know, the deepest of waters in this competitive environment. You're up against one of some, one of the biggest names in your group. And he's just holding his own, holding his nerve, playing his game. Seems like a good find. Ooh, this could be a big play here. Now, Tizian is usually quite well drilled on his clears. But the bait of the orb shots, yeah. I've oh, seen that setup before. Ah, he was ready for it. Shiro ready to catch a swing, but Sis, it's good to punish, oh. and they burn him out. Hey, open for business. Disaster has struck. Searson doesn't want to be the first man in. Certainly scoops up any additional util he could find, and they are going to just reset this. I, I like the call as well, because Nafani did start to float on over to join Hobbit here to fortify this A bomb site. It just leaves Inters on his lonesome over towards Cave. And here's the thing. The biggest issue for Big right now is picking a bomb site. Right? You, you have the number advantage, but you need to just go together to trade. Now, we do see teams put these feelers out, right, where they send one player in, but it looks like they are going to keep it by the book. And as they head back towards A... Searson's been posted up to confirm that no one's looked for info. I think Nafani has, you saw kind of a, a couple of steps of the thought process that he is going to gamble A eventually. Well, Hobbit's going to lure them in here, and that can activate Nafani. So if Searson, oh, he's moved away from the line. This is well placed. They get the boost. Great headshot, bomb loose, confirms their suspicions. They're in the right place. They hedge their bets, and Hobbit sends two to the Shadow Realm. 3v2 now, man advantage returns. Good nade. 20 seconds, a dink. Faven, Logue, all onto Searson. He needs to find Hobbit now. He's too low. The oh. box, it's banged. Perfect from Searson. Three frags and counting, looking to come up clutch. So much time has passed. He knows Inters is close. He knows it must be close. Inters, can he stop the plant? No. Searson would need to hit the flick of a century loud about this. Oh. And Inters not going to fall foul to Searson. He saves the CTs. Players given a gift. Hobbit a big part of that. Yeah, massive stuff from Hobbit there, right? I, I don't know what made him throw that Molotov, but it was perfectly timed. It thrusts them forward. He gets two massive kills there. It stalls them on out. Nafani activates, doesn't get the kill by bullets, but gets it done with the nade. And then they're able to get across the line here with only their sixth. But they're starting to work on something now. Uh, players, they'll need to string a consecutive round off the back of that. 
And you're going to feel a little bit hard done by here if you are big. You did a great job early opening up the account. You, you had the number advantage. You regrouped and just straight into that molly. And Hobbit doing a great little play. So sometimes that's the way she goes. Oh, lots of good damage. Chipping away is Inters as he's starting to heat up. It will flub that one there as well. Tried to get the molly off. It hasn't bounced in towards the lip of cave, so Inters can hang around. Two players working through mid of Krimbo and Tizian. And this boost, do they flash here off the line or does he just peek? There's the flash, but where's the peek? <laughs> Shiro, good restraint over the smoke. Eliminates the Steorping threat. Now we have already seen that when rounds slow down, players tend to be able to keep their finger on the pulse. Very nice slow dismount from Tizian. Doesn't make a step and Hobbit will be an under wiser. Two advancing on his position, crouching in, and Hobbit good for it. Gets the information safely. Crimbo doesn't have any element of surprise, but he has the precision required. 45, they regroup. Oh, yeah. Axel does sweep back through to nullify the threat. Oh, they're going into a lockdown here, aren't they? You're a cooked Shiro, good. Big clan only really looking to get a plant out of this, and Axel's not going to allow that. Clear and perfect play, just in the off angle. Recovery imminent here for players. It would take a couple more of those tests from Big. Yeah, and this is the perfect map to be able to just go on a massive CT-sided spree for players. So uh, if you were concerned when you were watching, you got to remember what map we are playing just here. Big did great in terms of getting the pistol, converting the forces, but this is where it gets very, very difficult. This is where the gun rounds, we're going to need to see something outside of the box. They need to take advantage of the tendencies of players. It might need a big individual just to pop off and get them two openings here because they got stalled out on Vertigo as well. Now it is going to just be five Pistolas, three Glocks, a P250, and a Deagle walk over into Axile's domain. And we saw him earlier get a full Eco Bash. Let's see if he can do it again. Alex Richardson for more. Hmm. That'll taste quite nice. And they will either stare at the smoke or accelerate through it. Here comes Axile's attempt to farm. Lovely stuff. It's going to be run down eventually. The Deagle, a bit of a surprise. And Faven. Nice plan. Off the plant. Oh, spoke too soon, didn't I? You did. Yeah, that does tend to happen. One man left. And that's the end of Sirison. So the uh, round that could have had a plan didn't. And uh, the score is now only separated by five whole rounds, 13 to eight now. And remember, uh, the gravitas of this matchup here, look, it doesn't have any immediate implications. We're not like, oh, these guys are out of the group, or oh, these guys are through. It's, oh, how deep does the rabbit hole go? Because yeah. uh, things can get a little bit funky, right? Movie Star Riders, up, oh, sorry, Mobby Star Riders upsetting players yesterday has sent this into it already, a bit of an interesting conversation. If results continue to trend like that, that's where we uh, really get to see how crazy Group C gets. Back towards A again. Tizian and Tabson both cop the nades. What if Big are just cursed because their their fifth is never going to have a capital N like everybody else? Yeah, yeah I think that is actually the, the leading conspiracy. <sighs> okay. Well, this is completely unannounced. Now they hear the pin. Axar's in a prime position to still have vision. Well, in front of the smoke, they may not clear him. It's all or nothing. Oh, jump down, traded. Hobbit again. He loves this box, loves this angle, thriving in it. It's Tabson sharp shooting that keeps Big Clan with their heart beating. And hope far from fleeting if Searson can get the bomb down. As a smoke, Searson, if he smokes off CT, it would be perfect. Don't go ahead of it. Oh, he nearly did. Nearly did. He's making me nervous, but ahead of the smoke is Naphne. Make or break time. Tabson's going for a round the world maneuver. Shiro switched on to the possibility. Inters is still on B during all of this. Yeah, can you believe it? But I mean, oh, they needed that. Just the perfect combination. Nafani goes down. A right swipe of his mouse from Shiro to react as Tabson rounds the corner for 14. There you go. Okay, so so these are going to be hard to come by here. So they brute forced their way into that site. The fact that Axel and Hobbit only go one for one, they were isolated in those jewels. It felt like the attack was just coming straight for them there. So well handled for Big. They've manufactured a gun round. Just need a couple more. He can get across the line and a big shot from Faven. He's been having a, another rough go of things here. Only six kills to his name so far, but that was one with some impact on it, right? You know, it's sourced up enough. 
Inters will hold on to this M4. I'm sure that uh, Nafani would be loving a drop as the loss bonus is only 1,400 next round. Hobbit could buy. Uh, maybe it'll go to Anxile, actually. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think that was... Um, for Big Clan, that's, that's, that's huge. I'm not saying this is going to be over quickly, but after losing the, the string of rounds they did concede, three on the trot, they wanted to prove to themselves that they weren't going to be having that long run in the same way they did on the CT Hall. This 3v3 solving for them is going to be a very good vibration. Just quickly with that noise that we can hear, that is the last timeout now called from uh, players. So uh, they, they did the same thing on Vertigo and still pulled through. They called a lot of their timeouts well and truly before regulation was over. Uh, I think here Inters could even drop two M4s. He, he had uh, over 6k, so he, he could have dropped two M4s right there, but uh, looks like it is just going to be the one. Hobbit to buy himself, and there should be a gun available there for Axile. So, so they do piece this one together completely. As we are now inside the washing machine. Good few red lambs in play. A lot of people uh, bringing it back. I saw a nice one yesterday as well from John G. Keeping it retro, keeping it old school. Tapson. He's got a good spawn for the A side of the map, and you can see Tizian responsible for all that util dumping. He's going to keep Hobbit guessing. I say that, it looked like a flash implied he was going through it, but no, just a containment spray. No one taking the early pace. Another A play here, and it's Tabson to seek out this. Now, Axile, he's behind you, mate. Tabson, will you check it? No, no one's checking it. Oh, this is making me nervous. The thing is, they can just walk in. The Axel have no idea. Oh, he's going to check. And he's just seen two of them with their backs turned. The freest double kill we have seen in Group C. That is very curious. I, I wonder as to why Axel's turned around there. I guess it's just a timing check just to make sure. But the fact that he's been able to play so hyper-aggressive in a main and get a double kill immediately ha has set players up for what should be their ninth now. Nafani's given one back over with some B-ramp aggression. So Crimbo, Sirison, and Faven with very little utility to operate with and so much time to sit here and stew in their own juices. I guess the, the beauty of Nafani going down means that you are going to get a numbers advantage on the site. They're going to split 2-2. Two, two. And it's contact as well. So contact in. Very predictable positions as if there is the contrary available, but this is the fight. This is the fight they've been well drilled for. Crimbo knows when he's exposed. His teammate's supposed to be holding it. Oh, and Hobbit holds it in. Inters converts, and now Searson 1v4. 20 seconds, he's been given the uh, green light to save. A good spot there from Hobbit, right? He was playing between two angles, right? He wasn't hard over towards the left-hand side. He wasn't hard on the right-hand angle, was just kind of crouched playing between both angles there. So you talk about Crimbo knowing what he's exposed to. I'm just like, well, I shouldn't be exposed to that. Hold up, Hobbit. You're making something out of nothing there, and so serious and as they try and chase, there's one. Axel's coming, he's Dead. coming, he's coming. Dead. Oh dear! We'll hold on to the AWP, so massive to keep that one in his hands. Yeah, you need to keep Searson on his signature weapon. The big green is very much the weapon of his choosing. This was such a crazy way to have players get back in, you know? Yeah. After Big just posted their T-round, and it was an intense 3v3, couple of timings. That one just uh, real hits a flat note, and this one will too. I mean, they're always going to be threatening. The individuals could click on some heads very nicely with their P250s and their Desert Eagles, but it does kind of hinge on Searson going hunting. If he goes for a cave fight, Inters maybe... Yeah, okay, Molotov him out. Extinguished to keep Searson alive. Didn't get the full extinguish, so he doesn't even get to continue his hunting. But when you know that there's an AWP available, right, this should definitely change the way that you play on the CT side. So you shouldn't be, like, sweeping into any areas, like, deep behind the cube, right, knowing that the AWP might be posted up on the box. Or if you're going to play in cave, maybe don't do the jiggle, right? Just little things that the AWP can definitely punish. You have to make sure you account for them. Like the boosting cave. We're not going to see it, but you can see Inters and Nafni has posted up for that. Shiro versus Searson. That's a nice tight line. Mission accomplished. Call one across here. Play hot potato with the AWP. Oh, did he just... He has thread the needle. Crimbo checked, and yes. there goes the threat. That was very threatening for a moment. The information implies that they could maybe try and fake B, get a plant out on A. Tizian's alone with a Glock. I guess, that, yeah, that's a good point, because if the AWP is shown now over to, towards this B side and they're able to get a kill, then it is going to draw quite the hefty rotation. And actually, they haven't even shown anything, and Axel and Shiro are now clearing mid. So Tizian has an open runway right now to plant. Yeah, and Tabson showing the orb should be enough. 
Lovely from Tabson. He will go down to the second player long. Inters oh, didn't actually go down. Yeah. There's the plant. It's going down right about now. He's ready for the push. Oh, I thought the quick scope could have come through, but at least the bomb plant has been achieved. Big, getting a lot out of this, considering how it started. If he had anything other than a Glock, I I'd favor him. Oh, there's a Deagle here if he can find it. It's just there on the ground. Oh, it's only a USP. <laughs> they even... They even... Ah, it they hoovered it all up. He'll just save the M4, or maybe he can grab the AWP. If he'd planted for himself spawn, actually. Uh, yeah, he could have gone for something a little bit more aggressive. But uh, he'll get the AWP back. So all in all, great round. Yeah. Two kills, bomb plan, AWP still saved. It's, all good. But it's so funny how it worked out. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, that's not how the typical uh, one hero AWP round would shape up. Was that Axel unscrewing his silence? He was again? there. I think he was just making sure it's working. Just checking, just checking. Nah. He just wanted to check. Wanted to unsheath it. Make sure that it, the, you know, the barrel at the end is not clogged. But uh, moments here of uh, almost this one getting out of control. Nice uh, two kills here from Tabson. Prepared for the swing of Nafany. And this one here, you're right. Yeah, the, the barrel was in the belly. Just needed to pull the trigger. But here we go. Back into the buys. Just two more rounds still for Big as we've now had two on the trot from here players. Is business, Chaddy. This is it. Business end of our second map here. And was, they're going yeah, for a exactly. bit of a BX sec. You can see Tabson's going to have the responsibility of all of those goodies in the corner. Dropping them up. Searson perhaps on the tail end to throw that stuff out. Couple of flashes to get rid of first. They're stockpiling, aren't they? Looks like Crimbo's going to be doing the uh, util job here. Come on, young gun. He knows them all. And we're ready to rock and or roll. Counter flash. Will they peek off it? Yes, they will. I think. Absent, absolutely fine on the vision front. Inters. No, they line oh. up. It was nearly the triple. What a spray out of Inters. And a great shot out of Shiro. He's holding his nerve. He's holding his sight. Barrel betrays him. They know he's still there. There's so much time. The rotate's on its way. What's Crimbo doing? advancing into the fray for Hobbit. Baits it. Can't overcommit with that. Gets a nice deep smoke off and he wants to draw the fire. Searson is down. Shiro sticking around. Well handled. Really nice management of that defense. And I do think that Nafani's Hirosh is indicative of how much at stake for players here. Yeah, getting this done as a 2 0 after being pushed all the way, that, that's going to be huge for them. If this goes to a third, uh, uh, that's where things we, we continue to have the conversation about being rough over there. Now, this was great from Inters, just playing everybody's favorite little cubby. Gets himself two. Actually, that could have been a real problem, right? Because if he goes down with only one there, Shiro, what's he up to now? 26 kills, having a great game. Axile, two. And Hobbit will finish things off. And out mid we go, quick with pistols here. Favorites already in towards Donut. Yeah, that is a nice pace change. He's not going to get flashed. He is going to be forced off, but Shiro, an uncharacteristic miss, leaves time and space for the quickest of the rounds. We've seen it's only Searson and his Deagle up against the whole team. And he goes down, fighting. 12 now to 14, and uh, we are at the, the real pointy end. You can see just how many rounds it's been. Do you take a timeout if you're NK? Well, there it is. It is. There it is. I was going to say, because, uh, yeah, you, you've allowed the boys to play for some time. They've had this lead for some time. And now it's probably an opportunity to either just breathe and relax. Guys, we still only need two more. Or here's a suggestion, right? And it looks like it's a little bit of both. The coach is doing all the talking here, trying to give them an idea to get this one across the line. The old big clan had issues with closing. This is not the, new, the old big clan by any stretch. In fact, with Crimbo joining the roster, now Tampson and Crimbo have a somewhat of a kind of a first and second in command uh, type of vibe. You throw NK into the mix. You've got a lot of voices to try and resolve any of your mid-series uh, dysfunction. I'm intrigued by Axel's choice of an org. I wonder if that suggests he's going to go for something a bit different uh, in his A defense. Yeah, it could be more retakey. Definitely a possibility here. I, I, I don't like the fact that I'm feeling like, hey, turn to Sirison for an opener, but it does feel that way a little bit. Tizian's actually ahead of this early util quite swiftly. He's, you. he's definitely going to be paranoid about that uh, post up, but this is where Axel's all oh, gets the freest of frags. He's mixing it up nicely. It's under purchase still, I think. Yeah, definitely. For fights like that, you just don't get a chance. Tizian didn't even get to fire a bullet. Didn't touch as the mouse one. And now, oh, there could be more Crimbo. The fact he's showing presence in A is actually really good for the big clan project. And then I say that as they actually all look ahead head back to join him. The thing is, they've got max loss bonus here, right? But unless they can guarantee themselves a plant, they really should, I'm going to say it, probably just save. 
Well, because, right, like... Yep. The, yeah, it makes sense. They're going to go for something here, but it's it's like next round, you know, unless you save the orb, you're not getting it. Well, look at this push. Oh, oh. oh he's given them a lovely shining You'll take that. light at the end of a very dark tunnel. You'll take that. That forces them into now essentially a 4v2 on either site, should they commit together. There's so many gaps here right now, A main and Red House. Yeah, Inter is considering it, Shiro is too. Oh, Hobbit can arrive from Donut as well. krimbo has been given a lot of freedom here. It is going to be held. Goes for a really nice long-range headshot spray. Shiro quick to swivel. There's one more. Tabson's unaccounted for. You're right. Hobbit's going to be focused on the site. Shiro too is actually pushing into it. And it's Hobbit that's good for the double. I know where Tabson is. He took a fight with Naphany. Oh, and he's caught the nade and through the flames. It's all done. 13 secured and they lose everything for it, Chad. Time to count the pennies. Whip out the abacus because I think as Naphany screams, they know they're in touching distance of taking control of this game. Yeah, this is the thing, right? They can go for another half by here on big, but if they want to have the all for serious, and if they want to have the AKs for everybody, they're just not going to have enough. And another big round from Hobbit here. He was relatively quiet within the first half, but he's activated and he's joined the pack. We have the star trio of Shiro, Axel, and Hobbit fragging on all cylinders right now. Inters and Naphne bringing up the rear, but to be expected with the more supportive pieces of this puzzle. But can they brute force through with pistols alone? Have enough for a cheeky little exec here. It almost worked for them last time, right? It was just the Inter's double that really stalled it out. So maybe give it another crack. Oh, yeah, Shiro misses his first opportunity and there will be more. Right down the gullet. Great nade. Three to receive. Early cave info acquired. They've got push off the flash. Where is their health? Where is their team? Inter's another double from his cubby. And there you have 14, 14. We're all tied up. This is a 10 5 half quickly becoming something very similar. There's certainly a bias for those CT sides. Another run of six from players here on the defense. All right, guys, uh, you can participate at home in Twitch chat right now. Give us a, uh, a Pog Champ in chat if you think this one's going to overtime, or give us a Keck W. If you think this is going to get done in regulation for either team, we will be polling your results. Rushley is on the uh, hotlines right now, calculating them while observing the game. You might even get him to pick up your calls. Okay. Different setup. Big definitely looking for something new, some new flavor to this T side, because right now they're giving a lot of information away. Exile here to play today, home in A, and now Shira oh. in every shot he takes. Big Clan dilapidated, completely lost. Lost full, you got 70 seconds, you got two HP on one player. That's the, uh, that's the, what's left, the remnants of this Big Clan T side. Yeah, just expunged from round number 29 here, and as you take a look, it's been seven on the trot. Well, I'm, a, I'm accounting this round's done, actually. It, it's been six on the trot, about to be seven on the trot, and likely to be the 16-14, because as mentioned, the max loss bonus, it's been in play for some time, but without the plants, without the bomb going down, you don't get the extra cash. You just don't get the extra money that you need. Oh, Tizian. He's been put in an impossible situation. Look at how much they've accounted for here. Let's just... Uh, Inter's waiting if he comes back spawn. Nafani's so passive, he can't push CT or Temple. And then Shiro watching Donut, right? This is the position where we're just yeah, highlighting they've given, him a, they've given yeah. him a play area. Like, it's like your parents. They said, okay, you can go anywhere here in the pub garden. Just don't go over the fence. Oh, he's starting to go over the fence. Young man. we said... I said no bombs in the playground. Yeah, I thought so. 15 to 14. Glad I didn't finish my sentence. And we are looking like a fully recovered players is the hottest of the topics. There is not much more for big. They've had so many rifle rounds that didn't go to plan. Now they're going to have a soggy biscuit of a Galil and a bit of nading. Let's see how far it gets. The maybe OT is going to be the best case for big clan. They're up against all the bells and whistles. Backup orbs, double orbs available. Axar's even juggling it over to A so we can have both to play with. That's so naughty. Quite a few Keck Ws, I think, Alex. I think the Keck Ws have done it. Okay, Keck W wins, and they're going for something quick into Axar's orb. He's got an orb now, they scream. Tizian down. They need to run him down. Going for jumping shots. He might take another. Oh. Faven delivers. Panicked. Tabson trying to do utility. Punished again by Hobbit, as in the open. Shiro rotates through Temple. He is there, and it's big. They need to say their prayer. Because he's a threat. 33 frags and counting. 
Everyone's here to receive you. You've got to clear your corners. They're trying to go for a plan. Crimbo punching in numbers already. Meets Hobbit. Shiro's there and call it done. Searson, a dead man. 16 to 14. What a recovery from players. 10 5 on the half. 10 to the good for Big Clan, but unable to get that machine back on track in the second half. And that's going to feel good. A recovery from players and a necessary one for this round of Robin best of threes. In this group, uh, we're looking forward to play against uh, Liquid and BAG. Just my opinion, Liquid has a, a lot of uh, potential, a lot of uh, experience to play on high level. And BAG, they did some shuffles and they're full uh, Germany roster. And if you're uh, speaking and uh, communicating in your own uh, language, it's um, easier, more easier than in international language like English. So I think they're gonna improve a lot. And it's hard to play against them always because they're tactically good. They have tops and as an in-game leader, it's uh, always dangerous. And um, they're playing home. <laughs> I mean, they have more uh, spirit. It's, it's always working like that. When the team playing in their home, they have some extra power maybe <laughs> inside, inside of hearts, inside of spirit. So it's, it's gonna be interesting one. And just when you thought that big were going to push us into that third map or even in overtime, nah, <clears throat> try again. Well, at least big will have to. For the players, though, it's a dub and two. They had an overtime in that first map, and, well, I'm pretty sure they're thankful not having to repeat that scenario. Yanko, Casada, myself will attempt to look at this one.